Um, so we'll have a landing page like this. We'll have these links. We'll have this amazing background image right here. Um, you know, we can simply log in and register using these links. We'll be able to search uh, jobs right here. We'll be able to see the trending keywords. Um, and yeah, we will see, be able to see a couple of information about, you know, the site stats and all of that. Uh, you know, a couple of jobs uh, listed right here and simply the rest is static stuff. Um, all right, so let me go ahead and give you a little sneak peek inside uh, inside the job portal, inside the job portal even more. So I'm just gonna go ahead. I'm gonna pick up my email and my password and simply log in. All right, so I'm gonna show you how to basically set up this amazing authentication system. Uh, it's fully functional, you know, with uh, the package shield, you know. Um, all right, so if we log in like that, all right, so as you can see right there, we can simply see our uh, username right here. All right, we can see all of these links that will allow us to handle, uh, you know, to handle a bunch of stuff about the user or about the job seeker. We can see, we can simply access our public profile. We can update the profile, update the CV, uh, save the jobs, uh, you know, show our saved jobs or show our uh, our applications that we send to the jobs. Um, all right, so right here, again, we can simply uh, search for the job. So I'm just gonna access a job right here. For example, all right, so this is the details page for the jobs. You can simply see the job summary right here. You can see, um, you can see the logo for this web, uh, for this company. You know, you can simply share this uh, job using the social media links. You can view the categories right here and if you click on any one of those categories you should see the jobs that are related to this category all right you can also go right here down at the bottom you can see a couple more information about this job um, and you can also save the job but this guy saved this job right here or you can apply uh, you know you can apply for this job right here of course there's gonna be a validation to tell you that you should update your CV if you don't have one and so on um, all right and here we will see the related jobs all right, for example, if I click now, apply apply now, or apply to this job now, you know, um, we will go right here and we will see applied for this job successfully like that. Um, all right, so simply if we go ahead right here and uh, let's see, for example, if we wanna access our, uh, you know, the jobs that we applied for, we will see actually that we will have this job right here. So we basically applied for this job. Um, so yeah, this is just a very, very simple sneak peek inside the user's end. You'll actually learn a lot of things, you know, building this. You will learn how, you know, some of that stuff are basically uh, basic stuff like working with the MVC and so on. And some are kind of advanced like uploading uh, files, you know, doing uh, like, advanced validation um, grabbing data you know in multiple ways and, or in a lot of ways and so on all right so now I want to go ahead and I want to give you also a sneak peek inside the admin panel because you, if you're gonna have uh, if you are gonna have a huge um, users end or a huge web app like this you have to create some kind of admin panel to simply handle it all right so we'll go to admin slash login so this is basically our login for the admins. All right, I'm gonna simply access my admins table right here. I'm gonna pick up an email and a password, um, and we will simply log in using those. So I'm gonna pick up this record. All right, so this is simply, all right, so this is simply the login. Uh, the email and the password are the same. If I click login. All right, so now we should access our index page like that. So creating the authentication system for the admin panel, will, it will be manual uh, completely from scratch, all right? Once we log in, we will land uh, on an index page or a landing page like this. We'll, we'll, we'll be able to see a couple of sticks, statistics about our own uh, web app, you know, the number of jobs, categories, admins, and applications. And right here on the side, we can simply handle everything about our own web app. We can handle the admins, the categories, the jobs, and the applications right here. All right, that are sent to these jobs, to the jobs we created. 
All right, so for example, if we go to this, we can simply view the admins right here. We can create new ones if we want to through this symbol form. All right, I will, sh I will show you how to simply hash passwords right here uh, in this section. All right, and if we access this link, we will simply be able to see all the categories. We can update, delete, or even create new categories right here. All right, using the symbol form. And if we access this one, we will have all jobs right here. All right, just a couple of pieces of information about the job, about the jobs. And right here, we can simply delete and we can create even new jobs right here with this huge form. I will show you how to simply upload and edit, you know, your files um, right here. All right, so the last section, which is the simplest, it's the job application. You can simply access uh, the job applications right here you can simply access the CVs you can access like a couple of more information about uh, a job seeker right here like its email uh, and so on um, so yeah this is just a very simple sneak peek inside our own admin um, and this is it actually for this simple intro so if you simply like this um, go ahead and grab the course right now or act now and I will see you inside all right so in this video I'm going to teach you how to basically install exam an exam is just um, just a server run or, or just simply a program that will allow us to have a, a bunch of tools you know when we're working with uh, development especially back in development all right so we will basically uh, have a server which is the Apache server um, which is simply just a local server and we will have um, mysql and a php program language and we will also have a php my admin which is just a, a tool for managing uh, databases and we can also have a bunch of stuff like it also includes uh, the Perl programming language and if you're not familiar with it it's basically a programming language that's widely used for uh, programming uh, for um, networks stuff like that all right but you know this is not our uh, subject so what we need to do in this video we are going to go ahead and install exam so if we just go and type in exam right here we should see this link which is the apachefriends.org so if we click on this so now we will go to this page and it's telling us download right here so we can download this for different um for different operating systems so here we have windows and here we have exam uh, here we have linux and uh, this is uh, apple right here os so we click on this obviously i have windows so now it should a window should pop up right here and we can just download this right away all right so now we can just download it if i click on save i already downloaded uh, i already downloaded the program right here if I just click on save now, it's starting to download. I'm just going to cancel this and I'm going to go ahead right away and install it. All right. So after it, after you download it, just go ahead and click on it right here. I saved it in my uh, desktop. So if I click on yes. All right. So. All right. Important because. You, uh, activated user account all right so if we simply click on ok and if we click on next so as you can see right here here are our own uh, components or the tools that we have uh, right here so right here i'm going to keep my sql so we already have the server uh, checked for us we cannot even like edit it or something and we here we have the apache server and here we have my sql files uh, i don't want this and this also and this so i'm gonna remove them i'm gonna keep pearl if you don't want it you can just uh go ahead and uncheck it um you know as you can see right here here is programming language and we already have php checked for us and here uh, program uh, program language is also uh, here i'm gonna and un uncheck this and uncheck this i want php uh, my admin because it's a very a uh, very handy tool for managing uh, databases so if we click on next we also click on next the selected folder is not empty please select a different folder 
All right, so if we if we go right here. All right, so I want to delete this because I tried to install it like before. So if I go to my C, you probably you're probably not going to do this because you did not install it before. So if I just delete this, if I go delete again, All right, so now if we just keep it for keep it right here at the C and it's going to create this folder right here and it's going to inso install our program inside it. So if we click on next, now we can see the language is English. Now there is English and Deutsch. I'm going to keep it English. Uh, and if we click next and also next, now it's un it's installing this right here. So here you can see it's it's generating uh, this file right here and it's installing the files uh, inside right here which is in the c uh, partition all right so i'm gonna like i'm gonna close this and i'm gonna get back to you in a couple of minutes until uh, it finish all right so it's nearly finishing up and it's telling me that it's gonna access um gonna access the firewall uh, the firewall here so i'm gonna go and allow access for this in order for this installer or in order for this installer to finish up um all right so just let's wait a second all right so now it's over so it's still a means setup has finished installing exam on your computer do you want to start the control panel now and i'm gonna go ahead and uncheck this because if i left this checked and if i clicked on finish you know we will have to start exam every time we want every time we like you uh you close or you turn off your uh, your own computer in order to go ahead and actually and actually work with it all right but if we uncheck this and if we click on finish and if i go ahead now to my the partition right here and if i go to exam and if i go down here and if i go to the control panel and if i try to run this as an administrator you know exam will run automatically every time you turn on your own computer right so you don't wanna uh, so you don't have to like start it uh, all over again right because this is just noisy you know all right, so if we click on this, click yes to install the Apache server, uh, the Apache server, yes. And if we also click on this, so this is also yes. All right. If we click on start. And if we simply start this also. All right, so great. We click on admin. All right, so this should start all of this. All right, if we click also on PHP, my admin right here. All right, so here is basically they're both working, which is just awesome. All right, if we go HD docs right here. All right, so if we simply go localhost, and if we go index dot php all right so it's still going to the same uh page all right which is this right here so yeah they're working for now everything looks everything looks great so this will be it and i'll see you in the next video so in this one i'm going to show you how to install the visual studio code which is the text that we are going to be using and probably if you're watching this maybe like 99 percent of you guys have already like um set up this uh this program okay and if you did just leave um just follow along you know you can skip this video whatever you like so basically i have it down here but if you wanna i already have already installed it but if you look up down here visual studio code we go over here click on this link you can click on download for windows now 
gonna like show you how to download it gives you like um a visual studio code so if you click on save it's actually going to be downloaded so i actually downloaded it so i'm going to cancel it and i have it over here on my on desktop and you're gonna click i accept this agreement next and i'm not gonna add it uh, to the path so i'm gonna go ahead if you want to create like a desktop icon or anything it's basically like a symbol program like any other program that you set up and now if i click on install i'm gonna be like installing installing this like visual studio code and if you go up if you go up over here you can uh, after you install it you can look it up and it will show up right here and you can open uh, the visual studio you can start coding with me and of course if you have like a php store if you have like sublime like i have one over here if you have text plus plus it's all fine it will all of them will do the trick i don't want to like click install because i've already had my uh, visual studio code right here it will override this one that i already have and i have like i have i have a lot of settings and extensions so i don't i don't want to like to set up all of that again so i'm just going to cancel but you will click on install and it will install it right away for you so yeah i hope this i will be like this one this one is so simple and as i said every uh, text editor will do the trick so thanks for this one and see you all right now so let's go ahead and check out the template that we are going to be using um to build this project so here it is you might be familiar with this if you have been like watching some of my courses or learning from some of my courses you know um so we will land on the landing page like this we will have this amazing uh background image we'll have a couple of links right here the profile link for example uh the post a job we're not gonna actually allow users to post jobs posting jobs will be from the admin panel but we'll have a register and a login page we'll have a search right here with the trending keywords uh we will have like a couple of jobs right here um all right and right at the bottom you know this whole thing is just static all right uh, so yeah if we simply open up one of these jobs so we will see right here and uh, you know the information about this job you know the the number of vacancies the experience the job location the salary the gender and all of that uh we can even share this job right here and we we'll also see some information right here uh we will be able to save the job or apply for it um we will have a couple of related jobs you know maybe we'll grab some jobs from the same category um so yeah we will have a bunch of stuff you know i don't wanna um like over complicate things but we will uh, you know there's a lot of details that we're going to be working with in this uh, course all right so i uh, should actually learn a lot from it so yeah i'll just stop right here and tell you uh to check out the resources section for the for the folder you know or for the code for this uh for this design so you can actually grab it and follow along with me in the next couple of videos so yeah this will be all and i will see you in the next one all right so this is going to be a very very important video and we're not even gonna um like install or uh, create a new project with good igniter just yet but we in this video we're gonna go ahead and we're gonna uh set up some configuration in our exam folder um all right so let's go ahead and do this right now um well basically we're doing this because this will just um allow us to avoid some errors in the future all right so go to your c drive right here if you if you installed exam with me and go to exam to the exam folder and then we'll go to the php folder right here and we will look for our famous php.ini um file right here all right so you can open this up with simply any text editor that you like and i'm gonna simply open this up with the notepad right here um all right and i'm just gonna go ahead and go Control f simply allow me um to look up something or to found something i'm simply gonna go ahead and type this out all right so hopefully you're seeing this word but it's extension equals i 
in the L. All right, so this is what it is. I can even write it again, or I can simply, you know, for your own sake, I can go ahead and open this up. Let me see, chose another app. I can try and open this up with Visual Studio Code or with Sublime, you know, whatever that you like. Um, all right, so we can open this up with Sublime right here. All right, so there we go. So don't mind these folders. Um, so we're going to cancel this. And now I'm going to go Control F. I'm simply going to go extension. Extension equals I N E L. All right, so you're going to go to this line and you're simply going to remove this semicolon right here. All right, so you're going to decomment this. All right, and you're going to go ahead and save this and you're going to close this whole thing. And right after this, now what we need to do to finish this configuration up, um, we're going to go ahead and open up our exam. So let me open this right here. All right, so I'm going to go show slash hide and I'm going to simply stop both the Apache and the MySQL. All right, so go ahead and, you know, stop, you know, uh, simply make them stop working. So as you, as you can see, I'm doing this right now. All right, so I can simply close this. All right, so they're actually stopped right now. Never mind this, you know, this error. But be, they're basically stopped right now. So all I can just go and simply start this. So now it's starting. And if I start this also. All right. So I, I guess that both of them now, since this is showing as green, the module right here showing as green. So both of them are working right now. And we simply got this configuration done. So I can simply close this off. Um, all right. So this is the first thing that we're going to do. Uh, to simply uh, work with our Quid Igniter app, and as I told you, this will just prevent some um, some kind of error that we will have in the future. Um, all right, so this will be all, and in the next video, we're gonna officially um, insert or create our first uh, project with Quid Igniter. So this will be all, and I will see you in the next video. All right now so after the you know the last uh, video we have set up some kind of configuration in the exam folder and now let's go ahead and try and create our uh code igniter project all right so all that you're gonna do we're gonna go ahead to google right here and we're gonna go code igniter uh like that you know you may go um codeigniter.com slash download or you can simply just type into google code igniter and this should get, get you to uh the official documentation so click click the link of the efficient of the official documentation and you will see the download right here all right so right here we have the the, the most the two most uh, famous versions of um of code igniter so you have four and you have three right here so we will work with uh the latest version of course and that will be three um all right so it's still on me to download this right now so i'm gonna go to, to my c drive i'm gonna go to exam i'm gonna go to ht docs and i'm gonna go right here and just save this all right so as you can see it's actually pretty small um so just go ahead to your c drive and go where this file is i'm gonna go to ht docs and there it is my quid igniter for zip file all right so simply open this up All right, so there we go. I want to now access this folder. I want to go ahead and copy this whole thing, these whole folders. Go ahead, Control C. All right, so it's copying right now. All right, so I want to go ahead and I want to create a folder. All right, so inside this new folder, I'm going to call my project CI dash job uh, board. Alright, you can call this whatever that you like, but I would suggest that you go with something that with something relevant, just like that name that I'm typing right here. Alright, so I'm gonna simply go ahead to this folder and inside it I'm going to paste uh, the files and the folders that I copy it, and I don't need this right now. Alright, so there we go. Right there we have our folders and files. 
inside the ci dash dash job work folder that i just created i'm going to go ahead and i want to open this up with visual studio code you can use any kind of text editor that you like but i will use this right away uh because it's pretty simple everybody has it and so on all right so you'll just wait until this opens up i don't have the best hardware you know all right so there we go right there we have our project right over here so the first thing that we need to do right here is to work with the database configurations um all right so we will work with a bunch of configurations right here to run our uh good igniter uh project you know smoothly because when i started out with good igniter i got a lot of i got into a lot of trouble you know running uh, my first project all right so we will go to the env uh, file right here um, and we will we will try and rename this and try to rename it from inside the text editor all right so we will just add a dot right here so it will actually make this dot dev so the env file right here is just uh, gonna allow us to work with some of the configuration of our uh, project for example right here i want to make the environment for this not production because production is just it's not going to allow us to see the errors when we actually code our a lot of sorry our code igniter project um all right so i want to change this to development which is uh, actually our case all right we're trying to develop we're trying to develop a project you know uh, locally all right we're not in the production mode uh, so i'm gonna turn this to development i'm gonna also go at the bottom and see you know some of my database configurations so i'm gonna go for these five lines right there and i'm gonna decomment those all right so here we have the host name for the database and this is local host of course the database name i will just keep the name as the name of my project so i'm gonna go job board like that um all right and the username for my database it's root and the password i do not have any password for my php my admin so if you have a password just put it right there and since i don't have one i'm just gonna leave this empty the db driver it's my sql just keep it like that um all right so save this whole thing right now and i guess that this is the first configuration that we need to make to run our own project and let me close this so the second configuration we will go to the app so again a, you might say why didn't you just uh, go ahead and explain everything in these files and these folders well i will tell you that this will take too much time and will, you'll probably never like we will probably you will never like finish this course because it's going to be too big i'm just gonna um go ahead and actually ex explain things that i uh, as i go so right here you will see the app folder inside the app folder we have like 90 percent of our own project right here we have the config we have the controllers the database uh the models the views and these are like the most important things in our own project we will work with them a lot and i think that you actually have some you should have some kind of good igniter um knowledge before you start this course all right because i'm not going to explain everything in details for example uh we want to go right now the config so we can make some configurations when i go to app to the app.php and this will allow us to make configurations with the with our project url so for example the base url i don't want my project to run on the local host 8080 80 port i want to run this as some kind of virtual host so i'm just gonna go ci dash job board like this like this right here which is simply the name of of my project you know the name this name right there right the name of my folder um right where i have my project files and folders um all right so i want to i, I want to run it like this and to finish this up we want to go also down at the bottom and we want to remove this index.php we also want to go down at the bottom and instead of the you know for the ui uri protocol instead of the request uri we will go past info which is right there all right so save the whole thing make sure that you did these three things the path info i uh, want to also go ahead and want to remove the index.php from here and we also want to remove the 8080 port and you want to go slash after the local host uh ci dash job board slash like that all right so save the whole thing uh simply um and close this i also 
uh, when I go ahead inside the public folder, you will find an index.php. Go ahead and copy this and go in the root folder of our own project and create a file. We will name this file index.php like that. All right, so paste the code that you just copied and go ahead at this part and remove this. So we will actually grab the right path of the app uh, of the app folder right here. So it's gonna it, so it can go to the config and then snap our pass uh, dot php uh, file, which is right there, which will allow us to grab the right pass for this project. Um, all right, so this is like the third file that we will work with, and the last thing that we are going to be working with it's actually an a dot ht axis file. So go ahead inside the root folder and go ahead dot ht axis file like that all right so and and go ahead and create create this file from inside the text editor and do not create it uh from from windows because it's actually not going to allow you all right to create one uh, since it's going to start with a dot um all right so for this file right here go ahead and check out the resources section and go ahead and copy the code uh that's inside it and just paste it and this is just some uh ht axis code you know it's like server configurations and stuff like that there is actually not a lot of things to explain right here all what we're doing you know when we go ahead and access the ci uh dash job board right here job board uh we want to go ahead and want to access the index.ht dot php file all right so that's what we're trying to do so just save the whole thing again make this part right here as the part of uh, or name this as you know the, the you know give it the name of your own project which is ci job board like that right here and right here all right and save the whole thing now and let's try and access or serve this project right there you know using chrome um so you can go ahead simply and you can open up your command line so go ahead and open that so i have my git right here i can just open this like that and if you want to go ahead and open up your you know your your normal uh command line on windows you go ahead right here and you go cmd and you simply press enter so this will allow you to open up a, a prompt like that uh in this directory as you can see we are in the exam hddoc slash ci dash job board so we can simply run anything that, that that we want right here um you know but i have my terminal right here and again we can just go ahead and since we created a virtual host we can serve this project you know without using any command line you know and we do not actually need it um at this case but i want to show you how to run um uh you know a code igniter project um even if you're not going to use this command because it's very important still uh, so i'm going to go php spark i'm going to simply go serve like that all right so this will actually allow me to run this project and you can see right here that it's telling me that this project is running on the local host 8080 which i'm not actually using since i already uh played with my configuration file you know which is the app right here all right i already made it so we will run on this link so i actually want to copy this link now and i want to go ahead right here and simply paste this link and this will allow me to simply serve my project all right so just give it a second all right so there it is so it's still a me welcome to code igniter 4.4 4 right here so this is the latest version of code igniter which is what we want to work with um and yeah we i can simply now stop this stop this command i can go Control c and stop this command like that i can simply refresh this and it will still work because we do not need to run our own uh run our own php spark serve command that will allow us to run the server so we're not basically running on the server right now um and to test this even further we can go ahead let me close this and we can go to app we can go to the views and views are basically the html files they're basically you know the design is you know is what you're gonna see on 
uh, on your screen right here. Uh, we will go. Uh, actually, let's go to the controllers, and the controllers is just the business logic, you know, where we have our methods. So our methods right here, there is the you know, uh, the, you know, the probably like one of the best uh, method. It's not the best. Well, you're gonna find this method right away in your project. It's created, which is the index method. So the index method right here, it's displaying the view of welcome underscore message. Um, and basically it's going to this views folder and it's basically grabbing this, the welcome underscore message right here. And this is basically the design, you know, or the HTML code. It's been executed and this is what we're seeing right here. Um, all right, but I can simply go to the home controller and instead of the return view right here, I can go something like, I can return a very simple message something like welcome from ci job board project by web coding all right i can simply end this with a semicolon and let's save the whole thing now let's see if it's going to display this or not um all right so if we refresh all right so as you can see right there uh, it's actually displaying my uh, it's displaying my text which means that everything's working perfectly um so yeah this will be all actually for this video and the next one we should go ahead and should work with shield which is just a package that will allow us to um uh, to install um or to create our authentication system so this will be all and i'll see you in the next one all right now so in the last video we went ahead and um we created our project we set up some configurations and all of that and we even like tweaked this index function um and now it's time to go ahead and, and create um the authentication system so there is a lot of ways to create the authentication system with quid igniter one of them is using the shield package and this is just gonna get things you know uh, people use this or developers use this to get things done very quickly which is what we are going to use actually and the second way is actually doing things manually right you're gonna create your view um you're gonna create your views your controllers everything uh, your routes from scratch um all right and it's it's gonna take so much time because you know you're not only gonna do this manually but you you're only you're also gonna handle the validation um all right so i choose shield uh right here so let's go ahead and I uh, try to get this done. So go to Google and simply go um, uh, shield like that. All right, you can go code igniter. Simply code igniter for for shield or shield code igniter for. It doesn't matter that much. So just access this link, which is code igniter for dot github dot io slash shield. As you can see. All right, so it's still on me right here. So I'm at the documentation directly. If I just click installation guide. All right, so I wanna go down at the bottom right here. As you can see, it's telling me that you need to install Composer. So if, if you do not have it, because we're gonna use Composer to install um, this package, all right? So if you don't know what Composer is, I guess that you should know it if, before you even take this course. Composer is just, uh, a package manager all right it's basically a software that's gonna allow you to install uh php related packages uh libraries frameworks and stuff like that all right uh, we could have actually used C composer right here to, to, to like to insert or to create a new a code igniter project but i chose the manual way in the last couple of videos um all right but right here we're gonna use composer simply in, uh, install shield so if you don't have composer go ahead and try and install it it's pretty simple it's just like any other software um all right but but i'm gonna skip this i'm gonna skip this step um all right so let's look right here it's telling me that i can simply use this the install shield the shield package so copy this whole thing and go to your terminal and go ahead and just paste it right here of course make sure that you are in the directory of your own project as you can see and simply press enter like that all right if you look actually at my .env file 
you can see that i set up the name of the of the database but i did not create just yet all right so let's go ahead and copy the name of the database so let's go ahead and try to access local host slash php my admin right there and try and create this database um so yeah if you look right here you can see that it's giving me this error right there so it's not it's telling me it could not find a version of the package shield matching your minimum your minimum your minimum stability required when an explicit blah 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 so all what it's doing right here it's actually giving uh even the documentation it's giving me that it's going to tell you that you have this error as you can see we have a troubleshooting right here uh, so it's still me if you get this error you can simply run the following commands which are these or you can simply specify an explicit version uh, of this um of this uh of this package um all right so we can simply copy this right here and we can use this all right simply press enter all right so now it actually insert or you know prepare the installation we're just trying to do some configuration for the package uh right here or you know specify an explicit version of it um all right so let's actually go to my php my admin and let's try and create this database all right so i'm gonna go ahead right here and click databases all right so there we go right there i can simply go ahead and paste in the database name let's copy it once again and i can simply click create and this will actually create my uh, database all right so still installing right there all right so as you can see database has been created and there it is the database right there you can simply click on it to access it it's completely empty all right so there we go um so let's just wait for a second and let's see i guess that it's gonna take another minute at this step so let me stop the video until this is over and get back to you all right so if you actually look right there you can see that now it finished installing shield so if we go back to our own project we will see that we will you know that this is that this uh, vendor folder is actually generated and this contains not only um not only the shield package but also a, a whole a lot of you know of other uh packages and libraries that we can use to build this project and if you want to know where the uh where the shield package is you will see that quid igniter for folder uh you can open it and you will find the shield folder so right here you can simply find uh, everything about the shield about the shield package all right so you can look up uh, you know if you open up the uh, sources you'll see how the authentication those those and those uh, authorization works uh, in those two folders you will see also the controllers right here that are used to build or you know uh, yeah to work with uh, the shield package and you will see also the views right here you can for example go to the login page and you can see the views of it right here you can also go to the register and there it is our uh, register right there um all right and you know this was just an initialization setup or uh, setting some kind of uh, explicit version of our own shield app we actually need to run this command also so we can um so we can run the migrations and all of that as you can see it's actually telling this us right here so i want to copy this and I want to also go right there and paste this HP Spark Shield setup. So as you can see, it's telling me uh, right now that it created these files. It created the routes right there. It, cre it created the OS groups, the OS and all of that. So it's telling me, do you want to run the migrations? You know, we can go with yes or no. I can simply go with yes like that. And as you can see right there and now it's run the migration and the migrations are complete and to assure you that the migrations are complete you go to your database that you created and you simply refresh it like that and you should actually see all of these um all of these tables all right which are not that which are not that uh, necessary actually when you think about it 
well i would say the most important ones ones are the os the os logins and the os identifies um, so if we go right there for example for the user stable this is will can this will contain our username uh, status and all of that i created that and updated that and deleted that and this will contain like uh you know when we do a successful login it will be registered or inserted right here and this will contain actually our email and our, our password our email right here is just the secret and our password is the secret too um so yeah you can see that you know this works in a weird way because why don't we, why don't they just uh, put the uh, the password and the email and the username and only the table users and that will be all but no they had to do it this way which is again weird but you know we do not care about this all right so i i guess that now if we go to the routes um and to access the routes in quick ignite you go to app and you go to config actually and inside the config you will see a bunch of files you just go to routes.php and there it is our routes right there this is for the uh this is for the home all right or for, for the index page you just go to the, the slash you know and this is actually our current page and this will access the home this will hit the home controller and it will hit the index function right there which is actually right here um all right and right after this you can see simply the service os routes which is simply which represents the login and the register links um all right so we can simply access them by going slash log n and this will allow us to simply access the login page All right, so as you can see right there, this is actually our login page, but the design is messed up. And it's also messed up for the register page. If we actually go and inspect this page, and inspect this page to see what's going on, you can see that right, that right there, it's not grabbing the, um, this link for the bootstrap.min.css. So it's not grabbing this right, all right? So we have to do something about this. We have to like change, this from the you know uh, we have to use another link to grab the bootstrap.min.css file um all right and you can also access the register if you want like that all right so there it is it's also showing us the same error right there and you can actually see the form but the, but the design is messed up uh so let's go ahead and do something about this so i want to go right here i want to go bootstrap uh css cdn so we need another link to include this css file uh so we want to go down to the bottom and we want to choose this link right there all right so open this up so you can see that we're going to cdngs.com slash library slash bootstrap in case you did not find this uh this link all right when you searched so for the version for the version right there we're not going to use this we're going to use like 4.5.3 uh right there all right and we're going to look right here and this is it this is the link that we want to use which is bootstrap.min.css and this is the version that we want to use right there so i'm just going to go ahead i'm going to copy this whole link right there and i want to go ahead so my vendor i want to go ahead where my um where my um my views or my forms are and this will be in the vendor quick igniter 4 shield will be in source and you can actually access the views right there and you will go right here at the register page for example and huh yeah you will not go here you need to go to the master template and actually in order to actually do this so yeah this makes total sense so we will go to layout.php which is the master template and you will see that there it is the bootstrap core css file and this is the one that we need to delete which is going to delete also the integrity and the uh, the cross origin right here we do not need those and i want to go ahead right here at this part and i want to simply paste the link that i grabbed like that simply all right so we are going to use um uh, cdn.cloudflare right there uh so this will help us to simply you know finish uh, this whole view so if we refresh this 
could actually see that our design now is fixed and as you can see the error now is gone um there right too and if we also access the login right there you can actually see the login and it's also fixed right here all right so now let's register for a new user and let's see um i know how this work how, how this whole thing works so we're going to go right here and for example i'm going to go um at gmail for example dot com let's try and grab you know let's set up the username and set the password as the same as the email if we click register for example as you can see passwords cannot contain rehash personal information so it's basically it's basically telling me um that you're not gonna set up your email as the same as your password um all right and actually the validation in shield it, it's set up very well all right to the extent that it's actually you know kind of annoying because if you enter like a password from numbers maybe it will tell you that uh, passwords should be numbers and characters and signs and stuff like that you know these validation things that uh, you know are annoying you know in some way so yeah we have to set up now the password in another way so i want to copy uh, the email um and i want to go ahead and open up another text file and i want to actually go ahead right there and paste the email in because i want to i don't want i don't want to uh, memorize both of the email and the password because they will look uh because they because they're different and they will look weird all right so for the password we will go don't for example learn underscore uh this for example we will go something weird like this so we will go um seven five six like that all right so let's copy this password and let's go ahead and paste this in also paste this in right there and i'm gonna keep this as web coding like that all right you can set the username you know whatever that you like it doesn't matter you know but you know keep your email and your password like mine if you don't want to you can get your email and password you know you can set them set them whatever that you like but again uh it's very strict the validation right here it's very strict so we click register all right if this has worked we should actually go to the index page and there it is we're actually going to the index page just the name of our project and slash that's all so now if we try to access uh for example our user stable if we click browse you actually see a record all right so there it is there it is a record you know the username right there and it says it says right here it's active it's inserting an updated ad and a created ad and right here if we go to the auth logins you can see yeah we did not log in just yet this is why we just registered we just registered all right so this is why it's not going to display nothing um and if we go right there and click browse also at the auth identifies as you can see we have a user uh, id we have a type which is an email and password we have a secret which is our email the secret to assembly our password hashed using the password uh, hash function uh, so yeah and this is all actually um, so if we want to log out since we did not set any kind of uh nav bar right now or any kind of buttons we, should, we can just go slash log out and this will allow us to simply log out like that um all right so now we can actually log in so pick up your email and password i already have my password so copy it and copy the email and paste now if we log in we should actually go back to the index page as you can see if you go now to your uh us logins and if you click browse as you can see right over there we actually got the identifier which is the email again everything is weird it's actually giving us um where did we log in from which is actually wrong you know because it's giving me mozilla right here but i'm using chrome uh so this is a bit weird um so yeah basically uh this is how it works and you might ask well where is you know is that is there a validation for the login and for the register because of course once we're logged in we cannot register we cannot go to the register or the login page and i will tell you yeah if you actually try to access your login page once you're logged in you cannot simply access it all right the validation is right there 
So, it, you know, this package actually got you. All right, it has pros and, and cons like any other package right there. Um, so, yeah, this is, this is all I have for you right now. In the next video, we should go ahead and we should set up our uh, template master. We should um, integrate our own theme, you know, uh, our own job board theme. So, yeah, this will be all. And I will see you in the next video. All right now, so let's go ahead and try and create um, the master template after we set up the authentication system with um, with Shield. Um, all right, so basically the master template is just a, the parent template that we are going to be using and importing on every website uh, on every page that we will have inside our own web app, at least for the users end. Um, all right, and. By using the master template or by importing it, we're actually going to load up the CSS and JavaScript files that will allow us to, um, to view or uh, to show the design well. Um, all right, so let's go ahead and try and do this. So I'm going to go ahead to um, the app and inside the app, I will basically have the views and inside the views, I'm just going to go ahead and create a folder. I will name this folder layouts for example all right and inside this folder i'm just going to go ahead and clay and create the master template and the master template will be app.php you can call it whatever that you like but i suggest that you go with that name um all right so go ahead now to you know to go ahead and complete with me go ahead and um open up the code you know of, of the design that i gave you in the past couple of videos and another uh, text editor so i choose sublime right here can open it up in any text editor that you like um and i'm gonna go ahead right here to the index.html and i'm gonna grab the part that's possible for displaying the header um all right so i guess i guess that you know it's this part right here um so yeah let me go ahead and copy this whole thing and let's go ahead right here and paste this in Right, so as you can see, we have a couple of JavaScript or CSS. Uh, yeah, a couple of CSS files right here that we're going to be displaying dynamically using Code Igniter, of course. But I want to go ahead right under the header. I want to fetch the part. Uh, I want to write the part that will allow us to fetch the dynamic body. All right, because the body, um, the body will be dynamic. All right, but um, the header and the footer will be static on every page that we will have. All right, so I'm going to go there with the class app and I'm going to go right here. And I'm going to go, I'm going to open up my PHP. I'm going to go this right here, render section. Right here, I'm going to pass in my keyword, which is content. All right, so when I basically use the content keyword right here inside my own uh, pages or files, this will allow me to simply render the dynamic body at this part. All right, so now I'm just gonna close this slash dev like that. Um, all right, so there we go right here. Uh, so I'm also gonna go ahead down at the bottom. I'm gonna pick up the part that's responsible for the, for um, for grabbing the footer. So I'm gonna go ahead, Control F, and I'm gonna grab the footer like that. I'm gonna also grab this whole thing. So copy and simply paste like that all right so as you can see right there you're also gonna find like a bunch of javascript files right here that we need to grab um all right so great so save the whole thing of course you know this is not all we need to go ahead and we need to move uh these files or the javascript and the css files inside our own project all right so i want to go ahead where my static files are where my project uh sorry to where my project is so i'm gonna go ahead right here and i have the css right here i also have the javascript the images the fonts and the css and these contains my files basically so i'm gonna go ahead i'm gonna copy all of them and i'm gonna go where my project is i'm gonna go to exam ht docs i'm gonna go to ci job board um then i'm gonna go ahead right here in the public and inside the public, I'm going to go ahead, I'm going to create an assets folder. And I'm simply going to add my 
files or sorry folders right here all right so there they are right there um so what i'm gonna go ahead and do next i'm gonna simply fetch them fetch them dynamically so we're here at the part of the js files so to fetch those dynamically simply go um like that and i'm gonna go echo well actually let me go to the config um let me go to the controllers base controller right here all right i want to go at the helpers and i want to add this url right here which will allow us to simply use uh the base url inside our own uh controllers and uh, and views all right so we're gonna go ahead right here so we're gonna go base url now and we're simply gonna go to the public folder and we're gonna go to the assets folder and then we're gonna go to the javascript slash gquery.min.js so it will actually grab this file like that all right so this is how you simply grab this so you will go to the public folder which is again right here all right it's in the root it's in the root folder of our own project and you're gonna go to the assets right here and you're gonna go to the javascript uh, right uh, right after this and you're gonna go to the gquery right here so you will actually snap your file so it will grab it right away all right so we should basically do the rest for the uh for these uh, files right here so i'm gonna go right here real quick and i'm gonna keep clicking and keep pressing alt all right at the same time so we'll actually select all of them together so let's paste this like that so i'm gonna also add a slash all right so and now what i need to do is i need to grab this part also and so again i'm gonna just keep pressing alt right there all the way down paste like that all right so as you can see right there now let's save this whole thing now um so let's also go ahead and copy this whole part and also i'm gonna do this to the, the css file so we need to start from here uh so i'm gonna go ahead i'm gonna keep pressing alt like that all right so paste so now i need to go ahead right here i'm gonna go close this and i'm gonna go ahead add a semicolon and here we go now let's go ahead and copy this part and also go right here keep pressing alt like that and paste this in and save all right so yeah we also need to add it right here so save this also so now let's go ahead and just refresh this All right, so actually nothing will happen because yeah yeah of course nothing will happen because we did not even do anything with this with you know we're just rendering some actual uh, some code right there or we're, we're just rendering for this uh right here just this welcome for ci job board project by web coding this is just a simple text all right so now let's go ahead and let's create uh the home view so inside the views I'm gonna go ahead i'm gonna create the home view so this will be uh the view that we're gonna be rendering for this index for this index function all right so let's create it now so i'm gonna go ahead right here i'm gonna go uh like that and i'm gonna go right here um and i'm gonna go this and i'm gonna simply extend right here i'm gonna extend my um layouts slash app.php so all i'm trying to extend is actually the master template right here that will allow me to, to grab the header and the footer um all right so right after this we're also gonna go ahead right here and we're gonna go this um let me see render section or actually this section like that and we're simply going to pass in a content keyword which will allow us to display uh, or to simply render the part of the of the body all right and right here i'm just going to go php or we can just go like this uh this um and section all right and we're basically 
gonna make it like that because it's simply a function all right so this right here it will extend the app.php which is right here and right here this will allow me to simply start a new section and i will pass in the content keyword which is again as i told you um as i told you i added it right here because this will allow me to render the dynamic body at this part um all right and right after this i'm just gonna end this section like that all right so save the whole thing now let's go ahead and let's you know grab the part of the um of the body of the home page so the part of the body of the home page it will be everything in this page except the parts that we included in the app which are simply the header um and the footer all right so let me grab this section this section also and this one and this one and this one right here so it looks like that we have a couple of sections all right so as you can see right there now we reached the footer so we're not going to grab the footer but we're going to grab all of these sections right here so copy this let's go ahead right here and paste this in all right so save the whole thing i want to go ahead right now to my controller and i want to return this view so i'm going to go return view of home all right i'm simply not going to need this part so you just delete it like that all right so save the whole thing now let's go ahead right here and let's refresh this all right so call to undefined method right here extends so maybe it's extend not extends all right so maybe we do not need this s maybe this is like the keyword for laravel or something so go ahead remove this s and save or it's as you can see right there it's actually grabbing our home all right so what's going on um layout slash app dot php this section blah 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 all right so let me go back to the app and let me go to the part where we're simply loading um all right so this is the part right there let me comment this and let me save let me refresh this now all right so possibly there was something wrong uh with loading the page all right so let me now go ahead right here and go to the console let's see if something is wrong right here so unexpected uh token blah 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 bootstrap main dot css custom dot gs right there all right so they're they're not even opening up but i guess that everything is fine except that we have except that the images are just you know there is something wrong with this input right here but you know i think i think that everything else is working perfectly to some level at least um all right so just let me stop for a second all right so i tried to look up things you know but there was no solution for this well i guess that we will go with the problem and we will fix you know a couple of these these line glitches along the way um so what we need to do actually right here we need to um check if we are logged in or not because based on this we will display the register or the login and uh you know so if we're logged in we're gonna go ahead and we're gonna display uh, a drop down menu with the username and if we're not we're gonna go ahead we're gonna display the login and the register links right here all right we will also display like um uh, display the background image you know at this part and we might even display a couple of images right here all right so let's go ahead and try and do this so i'm gonna go ahead back to the app.php right here and uh let's actually check this out so we have the profile and we have the contact uh right here uh so post a job blah 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 we're actually let's go ahead at these parts and let's go ahead 
Oh. So we have post a job right here. We have about profile. Blah, blah, blah. All right. So we have post a job. We should still unlog in. So we're going to simply comment these three links. And we're going to perform the whole logic at this part. Um, all right. So we're going to go ahead right here. Um, at this part, I'm going to go PHP. F is set. So to check if we are uh, authenticated, we're going to go ahead and use the authentication class. So we're going to go off right there, user. All right, so we're going to check for the username, for example. So if we have the user name right here, we're going to go ahead and we're going to... um display like um a drop down menu or something all right else php else like that we're gonna go ahead and we're gonna display the part um the part for the login and for the register so i'm gonna go ahead right here and for each um like that all right so i'm simply gonna pick up this login link I'm gonna paste it right here so this will actually be display um i don't want to keep this display null null all right so i'm gonna go ahead i'm gonna remove this like that um all right so i'm gonna go ahead right here and i'm gonna make this so it will actually go to um base underscore url and this will go to the login page like that all right i'm also going to copy this and paste so this will be the register all right so copy this and go right here and paste this register like that all right so save this and now let's go ahead and let's pick up all right so we have an error expected token and for each yeah this is actually end if not in for each all right um cannot use of the result of an expression blah 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 so f os um all right so we might not use the f as set if as set we're just gonna go like that simply so save this like that all right so Let's now grab the part that will uh, the, the part of the drop down menu. So I'm gonna go to bootstrap nav bar right here. So let me open this up. All right, so there it is, the part of the drop down menu. So let me try and pick it up right here, copy and assembly go and paste let's go right here and just go php echo we're gonna simply echo out the username if we have it all right so save this um all right so now let's refresh this whole part all right so undefined it call to member function username on null so if us blah 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 call to a member function username on null all right so this is this is weird so all right so let me stop this for a second actually yeah let's save let's fresh all right so attempt to read property username on null so still all right so just give me a second so the problem is that we actually need the asset right here all right so it was just telling me before you know and that was weird it actually felt weird when it displayed an error once we have the asset because this was just I, I was treating this as a function so this is why it was displaying an error with the asset right, but this should not be a function right here um all right so save and now let's refresh 
and there we go right there so since we're not logged in it's going to display the login in the register as you can see um so this is amazing um so i'm gonna also go at the part of this image i want to display this image because it's it's missing of the design so where is that image at uh it's actually in the home in the home right here so there it is the background image so i'm gonna go ahead right here i'm gonna go like that i'm gonna go um base underscore url i'm gonna simply go ahead to my public slash assets slash and we're simply gonna pick up the name of the image so cut the whole thing and paste and save oh, if i refresh this all right so there we go right there so the image now is being displayed perfectly so now let's go ahead and let's log in uh with our email and username let's see what's gonna go down um so let me pick up my email and my username right there so there we go let's now copy this let's log in so we'll go back to home all right so call to undefined message right here username so yeah again i fetched this as a username and it should not be fetched as a username all right so this right there this is actually an element like that all right so there we go so as you can see right there now we got our own username right here which is amazing um all right so we can actually do our logout if we want to so let's go ahead right here at this part and let's go log out like that and I'm gonna go ahead right at this part and let me copy like a link. This link, for example. And let me go right here. I'm simply gonna go to the log out. So save, refresh. All right, so if I simply go ahead right here, as you can see, if you look down at the bottom left, you can see that the link is going to slash log out which is actually amazing um so yeah let's go ahead and i will show you how to display a couple of these images and you'll simply display the rest all right because as i you know i'm not going to display every image right here i'm gonna i'm not gonna just make uh you know this video too big for nothing all right so let me go at this section for example so we have a couple of images right here all right so all what you're gonna do you're gonna open up your php right here tags and you're gonna go base url all right and you're simply gonna go ahead and go where the images are which is public and inside assets folder and you're simply gonna pick up this right here all right so this will actually allow you to display this image all right so there we go right there you got you actually got the name of the image right there so we're not even i'm not even gonna touch those because these jobs they will be displayed dynamically from the database all right so uh so you can simply copy this and you can go right here and paste and let's copy this and you can also paste right here all right so i need this so save now this will allow you to simply display the other image right here um all right i'm also gonna pick up the image at this part so i guess that it's pretty simple to display images so there we go right there let's go php like that the php tags and go base url which will simply allow you to grab uh, the directory of your project all right and go uh, public and go assets and go slash and simply cut this right here and simply paste like that and save um 
now let's go ahead and refresh this all right so now it's displaying this background image so i guess that we have another image right here that we can display um um apps dot png so is that it basically i guess i guess so so let me copy this and let me go down at the bottom let me go ahead and paste this in i'm simply gonna end this like that all right so save this now let's go ahead and refresh this all right so there we go right there now we got this image so yeah basically this is how this whole thing works right here so this will be all and i'll see you in the next videos all right so now let's go ahead and try and work in the home page so inside the home page we'll have um, a search function right here and we will also have um you know these these jobs right here so let's go ahead and create um and create a model for these jobs so we can actually insert a couple of big jobs and we can display them at this uh section so i want to go ahead right here to my project for example and i want to open up my terminal so i'm going to choose get so i can actually create a new model and to create a new model in code igniter it's it's pretty simple you just go php spark uh, make model right here and you simply type in the model name so my model will be just job like that so i'm gonna actually insert this in the job um in the job in a job folder all right so let's go ahead and just press enter so um we go app and if we go models right here it actually you should actually see that this will be created just now all right so there we go right here all right so there it is our model so our model have a bunch of um elements inside it so as you can see right there we got the table uh right here which is jobs and it's already prepared for us and we got the primary key which is id and the most important thing about this part it's the allowed fields because this is this is basically our columns um all right so the columns in the database I will just go ahead and I will open up um, the design for this so it will actually help me um, so I'm gonna go ahead I'm gonna open like any one of those jobs all right so we will have the title of the job or the name of the job so I'm gonna go ahead I'm gonna go name like that and I go ahead and copy and paste like a couple of times so you'll have the image of the job which is actually the company image all right uh, this background image right here will be um it will be static all right so this is basically the image right there so i might keep it like uh company underscore image like that um all right so we also have the company name we will have the location we will have the job type so company name location job type all right so and right here we have published on so let me copy this or should we like set this to be the created at um so what do you think um all right so we can actually copy this and create a new table that's fine sorry new column all right so this will be published on like that and we will also have the vacancy right here uh, so what else we will also go employment status um oh let me copy this well the employment status it's actually uh the job type i guess as it is yeah the employment status it's full time and there it is full time right here all right so that's fine so we will grab the experience right away 
All right, so let me paste it right here. I'm going to copy this and paste like multiple times. So cut this and paste. All right, so the job location. I guess that I specified the job location right here. Uh, all right, I already, uh, you know, it's already right there. You know, it's already the location. All right, so we will have the salary and we'll have the gender. We'll have the application deadline. Um, all right, so let's paste this in application deadline like that. So, and we also have the job description, the responsibilities. So, copy this and go ahead right here. All right, so let's copy this and like paste multiple times. We have the responsibilities. And we have the education and experience. All right, so we will have the other benefits. All right, so I guess that we can have like a couple more things, but you know, we will just keep it like this for now. I guess that everything is fine for now. So save the whole thing. Let's go ahead and go and create this table. So let's go ahead and right here, click new. All right, so let's paste the table name in. Let's copy. I'm going to keep this title. All right, so save. Let's copy the title. Go right here and paste. So this will be a var car. It will be 200. All right, so uh, this will be an integer, and this will be the ID. All right, so this will be the length of 10. And right here, I'm going to keep this auto increment, and it will be a primary key. All right, so let's go ahead right here and just grab the company image. Our car 200 right here. All right, so let's add like a couple more columns. Company name. This will also be our car 200. All right, you can simply speed up the video if you want, because again, we will just have all of these to create. So let's go job type, var car 200, published on var car 200, vacancy right here. This will be an integer and it will be 10 experience this will be our car 200 Let's add a couple more columns and we will have the salary all right so our car 200 right here we will have the gender our car 200 Vacation deadline. Um, so let's check the application deadline. So yeah, let's go ahead right here. And also keep it a var car, that's fine. The job description. Text. And I will keep this unlimited. So I want to go also for the responsibilities text and it's going to be a limited number of characters and education and experience all right so also text and the other benefits right here also 
uh, text like that. All right, so you'll have a couple more two columns because if you look down here, you will see that it's already sitting for us to create that and the update that and the delete that. You will just copy the create that and make this so it will be a timestamp and we will show we will choose the default so it will be current timestamp and it'll also grab the updated ad and let's also paste it right here so this will be timestamp current timestamp so let's go ahead and click save all right so there we go right there i know it's kind of huge it's 18 columns let's go ahead and insert some fake data so for example, I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to copy from here and paste. So the company image, I'm going to go ahead right here and grab this company image. Um, all right, so let's go ahead and try to grab this name. And the company name right here. It's actually Bama, I guess. I don't know how you pronounce this. Uh, so the location it will be new york the job type is basically full time or something all right so let's copy and paste right away the publish then um i want to remove this close this i want to copy this date actually let's make it like 2023 so it will be kind of recent the vacancy i will give this two vacancies so the employment status, all right, so it's basically uh, the job type right here. So the job location, again, we said this to be New York and the salary, there it is. Um, yeah, the salary is right here. The experience, it's two to three years. All right, so the gender right here, it's actually any. All right, so I'm just grabbing this data for, you know, to make this not take long time, to make this take just a, a short amount of time, all right? So the application deadline. All right, so I'm going to keep this until 23. I'm going to keep this until, for example, December like that all right so the job description we can simply grab this text and we can paste the responsibilities i'm going to keep it the same it's a dummy or a fake job anyway so let's also paste this right here all right so let me actually paste another job uh for example i'm gonna open this up yeah i will go to the same page with the same uh, with the same data so we better go ahead and pick up this uh, for example right here so let me go ahead um, I want to pick up like the name for example so let me go inspect like that all right so um, we can pick up the image from here And we can paste this in so the title it will be back end um developer all right so the company name it's actually amazon you know the location right here it's actually um all right, so we better go ahead and just grab. We can keep it like the other job, that's fine. All right, so let me go ahead right here. Now let's pick this up. Paste, so the job type, so let me click this. There it is can paste this in so we can keep this so it will actually be part time so publish on we can copy this and you can paste it right here so we're going to keep this so it would actually be um june all right 2023 for example 
and the vacancies right here are three and the experience is like two to three years that's fine and the salary it's like you're gonna copy this you're gonna paste it right here all right so the gender it's basically male all right so application deadline let's copy this go right here and paste so this will be 23 I will keep this so it will actually be December also. All right, so it might be like that. I don't know. All right, so for the job description, let's copy this, and I'm also gonna paste it on the others right here for these. All right, so if I click go, it should actually insert both of those. All right, so there we go right here. So now I wanna go ahead and I wanna display um, these jobs right here that I just created. All right, so I wanna go ahead, I wanna close this. I wanna go to my controller basically. So there it is, the home controller. We're gonna go ahead right here. Let's go ahead and try and use the model first. Since we're gonna use it, we need to simply uh included so i'm gonna go job i'm gonna go simply to the job model like that so what i'm doing again i'm just trying to grab this model that i just created in order to actually grab the data from it all right so this is basically what i'm doing right here um so let's go ahead and uh, function and i'm gonna go um jobs i'm simply gonna instantiate the job model all right so the job model class so since i already have an object which i created just now I can simply go find all like that and i will simply name this all jobs equal job right here now let's go ahead copy this and go and simply send this in uh, so i'm going to send it with the compact function somebody going to paste this in like that and save um so let's now go to the home so we can loop through this um let me see all right so there it is the part so we have we will have a couple of jobs of course right here so i want to go ahead and i want to keep one a uh, one li and i'm simply going to delete the others because we will only loop through one so Let's go ahead and delete these right here. And let's go ahead right here at the top. I'm gonna go HP for each um, all jobs. So um, for this big array, I'm just gonna give it some kind of um, some kind of alias right here as an object. And I'm gonna go ahead and copy this. And for example we will just display the images so i'm gonna go and paste this in and i'm simply gonna um well actually i need the base url base underscore url i'm gonna go to the public i'm gonna go to assets folder i'm simply gonna go slash and simply i'm gonna concatenate this right here i'm also gonna go for the images folder all right so let's cut this and paste it right there and this will be actually the company image this is just the name of the column in the database or in the table oh now since we do not need this let's go ahead and delete it um also gonna go down at the bottom and i'm gonna go ahead right here and end this for each so i'm just gonna go php and for each like that all right so let's go ahead and save this so we have an error right there yeah this should be a column uh, a column right there not semicolon so save the whole thing and now let's go ahead and refresh this all right so we have an error so read property company on array so possibly we need this to be an array right there so company 
underscore name. So save this and let's go ahead and refresh. All right, so there we go right there. We actually have two um, product designer and product designer. So something is wrong still. All right, so. Um, paste URL, public assets. So, you know, we need the slash right here. So this is why the image is not showing up. So after you add the slash, the images now should actually show up and they're, they're still not showing up. So what's going on? Yeah. Sorry about that. This should be image, not name. So save. Refresh. All right. So there it is. The image is right now. So we can basically uh, display the rest of these data. Let's copy this. And then I want to go ahead right here. I want to go ahead and paste. All right. So now we have the company name. And we have the location. And we have the, the job type. And save this. Now let's go ahead and refresh. All right, so we got a problem. So I defined the array company type. So this is actually job type, not company type. Save this and let's fresh. All right, so there we go right there. Yeah, this is not company image. Um, all right, so uh, company, let me see. This is, this is actually um, the title of the job, so yeah. So there we go, save this, let's refresh. All right, so there we go, right there, the product designer and the back end developer right here. Um, so yeah, this is how this whole thing goes right here. It's pretty simple, basically, we just created some data inside our column that we created and we hooked it with a model and we displayed the data uh, right there. So no big deal. Um, all right. So this will be all, and I will see you in the next video. All right now, so let's go ahead and move to the next part, which is displaying this job um, in another page, the details you know, of this job. So basically, we're going to display it in a page like that. Um, so yeah, let's go ahead and do this. Um, so we will just go to, to the app, and we need to go to the routes now. So we will go to the config folder, and we will go to routes. And there we go. You can actually see at the routes, we have only two links. This link right here of the home page that links to the index page. Uh, sorry, to, yeah, it's linking to the index page through the index function. And um, we will have also this link which represents the login and the register links. All right. So what I want to go ahead and do, I want to copy this one. I'm going to go ahead right under this. And I'm going to go jobs like that and I go ahead and paste this in uh, so for this part I want to set some kind of prefix and that is it will be the jobs prefix and I want to link this also to a single dash job right here page um, all right and I want to send in some kind of ID so we can uh, grab the job by the ID so I'm going to go ahead slash num which represents simply an, a number uh, right there and I want this to go to a new controller that I'm going to that I'm going to actually go ahead and create and that will be the jobs um, controller so this will be in a jobs folder and here it is the jobs controller like that and this will link to the single job um, function all right so since we're going to send in 
some kind of ID. I want to go ahead and I want to add this so we can actually single that we're adding some kind of ID uh, or some kind of parameter to this but to this function right here. All right, so save this whole thing. Let's now go ahead and copy this so we can actually create this controller. I'm going to go ahead right here and create the controller. It's kind of similar to the model. We would just go PHP Spark Make Controller like that. And we will put this in a jobs controller. We will go ahead and go slash and simply paste in the controller. All right. So here we go. Now it actually created this controller. Um, so if we go to the controllers, we will see our folder, which is jobs. And there it is right here so i want this to be i want this function to be um a single job right here all right so paste the same and we're gonna send in the id so there we go um i want my function to be like this actually all right so and right here i'm gonna go ahead and since i'm grabbing an id i'm just gonna go ahead first and I'm actually um grab this model or include this model of the job so I can so I can actually use it. I want to go ahead right here and I want to go uh job assembly equals um new job which is my model and I'm gonna go right here and I'm gonna uh, add the single job function and this will equal the job that we created which is our um our object so now we can just go ahead and use the find function right here to access um this row so simply will access the row for this for the job by its id since it's already unique so we can simply use the find right here all right so again what i'm doing is what i'm creating object of the class so i can interact with my table which is the jobs table so since i grabbed an object i can now simply create this variable right there and i can simply use the find function on this object and you can simply add in the id uh, right there so uh, so i can actually grab this whole row so if we found an id for a job now this means that we have this whole row uh stored inside this variable so if we have the if, the, if we ha if we have this whole row we can just go return view right here so i'm going to return a view in the jobs folder and this view it will be single dash job like that and i'm simply gonna go with the compact function and simply pass in this whole object uh, right here all right so there we go save this now go ahead and copy this and let's go add the add the views and let's go ahead right here and create the folder of jobs all right and somebody will go ahead and paste this in and go dot php like that so there we go um now let's go ahead and grab the design for this so here we have the job dash single so we need the part that we will fetch in the dynamic body so we will grab these sections right under the header right under the header all right so we will grab these like that so there we go let's go ahead and copy this let's go ahead right here so let's paste this in i'm gonna go ahead right here i'm gonna go simply um and type in uh this uh end section or something like that was it in section let me go back to the home and if i go down at the bottom yeah it's actually in section and it's a function i can simply copy this and paste like that i can also go at the home and i can pick up this so this will allow me to display the nav bar and also it will allow me to start my section so save this like that all right so great so uh, what i want to also go ahead and do i want to do this part and uh, for the image so i'm gonna make this whole thing dynamic so this will be base underscore url so this will allow me to grab my road directory or the link of my road i'm gonna simply go right after the link we will go to slash public slash assets slash images like that 
and this will simply allow me to grab the image so save this like that and um all right i also want to go at the part in the home and i want to link to this um to this link all right or just add in this link so we will have it right here so as you can see this link it's going to or this anchor it's going to job dash single dot html if you look at it right here you can see that it's still if you look down at the bottom left you can see it's going to slash job dash single dot html so i need to link this right here my new link so i will just add some kind of um some kind of name so we can ease in things up so i'm gonna add a symbol name instead of writing the whole url so this will be single dot job like that so save the whole thing now copy this now let's go ahead to single dash job well actually to the home and at this part i want to go ahead and i want to remove this whole thing i want to go php echo url underscore two so this will allow me to use the names of the routes so i'm going to simply paste this in and go ahead right here and just add in uh the id of the job since i'm already using an id um all right so this right here um yeah it should be right here all right so it should be like that remove this semicolon right there so again I'm just using the name of the route that I just set up at the routes right here this name at the home so I can link to my link that will allow me to go to another page and display the job uh, the, the job details page or the single job page uh, so there we go I'm just going echo URL to I'm going single dash jobs which is the name and I'm sending in the ID right along with this right here so now let's save this and let's go ahead to my single dash job and i want to go ahead at this part and simply go um single i can simply now grab this since i already sent it in right along with the view so i can go right here i'm gonna paste this in i'm simply gonna go um for the name of the job was it the name i think it was the title so yeah let's save this now and let's see what's gonna go down so let's refresh this all right so we got a problem so the route for cannot be found single dot, dot jobs so let's go back to the routes so and let's see what's gonna go down let's see what we have so we have as single dot jobs um yeah this should be like that yeah this is an array basically so we need to add this equal sign and the greater than sign so save this and let's refresh all right so there we go and uh, now if we hover down right here so as you can see right there we're actually going to a dynamic link that, that i just created which is slash jobs which is our prefix slash single dash jobs uh, or single dash job slash one which is simply dynamic id if we hover over the next one as you can see it's now getting to the that you know to this to the parameter of two all right so this is two and this is one right there we simply click on this all right so we should go to this page where we're simply going to see uh the name or the title of our own job and if we also go to this is the backend developer as you can see you can, you can see right there the backend developer which is great all right so now let's display the rest of the data since we got everything right so i'm going to copy this and i'm going to go ahead right here this is also the title of the job and let's go ahead right here all right so this is the part where we have um the image so we're just going to go base underscore url we're going to go to public slash assets slash images all right so we're going to go single job and we're simply going to go uh company image
All right, so copy this and go ahead and paste like that. Actually, I want to start my PHP first, so let's paste. So I guess, so what was that at basically? I guess it was the company name. Yeah, it was the company name, so. All right, so right after this, um, product designer, was it the company name or, yeah, it was the title of the job, so. Let's copy this now. And let's go ahead right here. This will be company underscore name. This will be the location. So if you know everything and if you get a clue of what's going on, I guess that you do not even like continue. You don't want to continue for the all video. So basically we're just displaying the data. All right, so this will be job underscore type all right so this is the job description right there we're gonna just we're gonna remove one of these paragraphs and we're gonna go ahead right here and we're gonna paste this in so this will be job description so um I can go right here. I can simply go to the structure. I can pick up this. Let's copy this now. And let's go ahead and remove these LIs. So we will only need one to display the responsibilities. Let's go ahead and copy this and paste. Now let's copy this. All right, so we have the experience and education right now. We can just delete this whole thing now and we can remove this and we can go ahead and paste this in. So let's grab this and let's go ahead right here. let's remove this part all right so let's go ahead and remove this and go ahead and copy and paste other benefits so let's go ahead right here and copy this all right so i guess i guess that everything for now it's done so save now let's go ahead and refresh all right so there we go right there we got the image we got the title we got all of these pieces of data that we need to get right here uh there's just this image right there which i'm not sure what it is yeah it's yeah yeah it's this image right there which is static so let's try and find it so there we go right there um i want to actually go uh right here i'm gonna go base underscore url very quick we're gonna go public slash assets slash and we're simply gonna snap this whole image and save like that and there we go we refresh this now all right so as you can see we grabbed the image right here so yeah this is how this whole thing works so I want to go ahead and just add a semicolon right there and save this. So it will simply, nothing will change. It will still display the image. You simply want to display the other one, the other, the other job. There we go, right there. All right, so again, everything is working perfectly. In the next one, we should maybe take care of this uh, share you know share this image uh, through social media for example so yeah this will be all and i will see you on the next one
All right, so in the last video, we went ahead and we displayed um, data for the single page right here. But I forgot to display the data for this part. You had, you have my, you know, you might have noticed this actually. Uh, so I displayed the data and it's all fine, but this part I didn't. So, and we're not only going to just display the data for this part. I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to show you how to share this job through these social media links. Um, all right, so let's go ahead and do this. So let me now go ahead to app and let's go to views. Let's go to jobs and there it is our page. So let's go go to this page simply go you know go to this part of the page which is job uh summary right here all right so you're gonna find this part so this is the part that I forgot to display the data for um so I'm gonna go right here you gonna simply go like that and let me pick up for example this array all right I'm gonna assembly uh use a column or grab the column all right so so for the column name we have to go yeah it's published on right here all right so we're gonna also go right here to copy this we're gonna go right here and display the number of vacancies so this will be vacancy like that. Now let's copy this now. Let's paste this in. This will be job underscore type. All right, and this will be experience. Like that. We also have to grab this. And this is the location. And there is the salary. We go to the gender. And right here will, will be a application deadline. Paste and save. So now if we refresh this. All right, so it's taken a while, which I'm not sure why. I should actually refresh right away. Um, so we can actually move to the next part, which, you know, which is the links right over here. All right, so we got an error. So let's see what's, what's that. So array key, single job, and you find array key, single job. All right, so yeah this should not be single job this should be published on like that underscore on so save all right so it should work now all right so for the part for the social media links i already prepared my file so go ahead and check out the resources section for this video and you should find these links and these are the links that will allow us to simply um share this through share this jobs through social media all right so we want to copy this link then you want to go add this part you know of the share this section and this is the facebook right there so i'm just going to go ahead i'm going to paste this in so again this is just a link you know that's already set up by facebook all right it's a technology right there that's set up by facebook by facebook so all what we're going to do uh, at this part we're just going to go ahead right here you can see that it's we're sending some kind of parameters so for the u right here uh we will just display uh, the id of this this job so i'm going to go ahead php right here and i'm going to go and grab this and paste like that all right so this will be id all right and for the code the code can be like the title of the job or right? it can be anything it can be even the job description 
but I'm gonna keep it the title. Alright, so now let's go ahead and copy this also. And actually before this, let's go ahead and grab the link for the Twitter. Let's go ahead and paste it also right here. Alright, so we have the text which is again the title of the job. All right, and we have the URL, which is simply will be um, actually, this is not just the idea. This will be the whole URL. All right, so this will be base URL like that. And we will send in posts, which is the prefix. And we will send in single dash job, which is our page, the current page right, right here. And we will also send in the ID. And let's cut this. And paste like that. So there we go. Alright, so we are gonna we're gonna need this all part. I wanna go ahead and wanna do an echo. Alright, so let's copy this and let's paste it right here. Alright. Um and for the ur for the url right here um yeah this part yeah this the url should be here all right so and this part it's the part for the text so this will be the title okay um so right after this we will have the link then so let's go ahead right here let's paste this in all right so we have the url right here so let's copy that And let's paste it right here. We just have to send the link, the current link of the job. All right, and that will be actually everything. So, yeah, save the whole thing now. Let's go ahead and refresh this. Alright, so it's taken a while. Actually, none of them will work except the Twitter because we're we're developing this project on localhost. Uh, we're this we're developing this on a local server, so this is why the, the Facebook and the LinkedIn they will not work, you know. But the Twitter it will actually share this. Alright, so we will try this just in a second. You know, I don't do not know why it's taken too long all of a sudden all right so let's try and refresh this once again all right so there we go now i want to open those and open this link for example All right, so as you can see right there, it's actually going to share it, but it's showing this error because as you can see right there, parameter href should represent a valid URL. Um, Facebook echo base URL, we're going to slash, we're going to post slash single dash job, and we're going to send in the ID. All right, so let's get back right here. All right, so there's something wrong with the code. Yeah, this should be an echo right there also. So sorry about that. Let's save. Now let's go ahead and refresh this. Let's close this link. Let's see if we're doing something wrong right here also. Or yeah, there is should be an echo right there also. Copy this. All right, so I guess that this is all. Do not forget the echo. So save. Let's save once again. All right, so now if we open this up, all right, so parameter should represent a valid URL. Let's hover over this. You can see the code um, locally 
yeah i would say that down here at the bottom it's everything is fine but it's giving us uh this error because again we should not share this uh once we are we're not allowed to share this once we are on localhost all right so let's now check the linkedin for example should also display some kind of error or it's not going to share it anyway all right so as you can see right there now this will not work right here but if we try twitter for x you know all right so let me just go ahead and hover over this so i guess that the link is fine the url is fine so as you can see right there it's actually opening up all right so as you can see right there i can simply click post if i want to so there we go right there if i now access my profile i can simply go ahead right here um and there it is it's actually shared right over here which is amazing um all right so I guess that this is all for this video. I know it was kind of it was kind of annoying all of these refreshes, you know, all of this slow low loading and all of that, but you know, we got it. So this will be all and I'll see you on the next one. Alright, so in the last video we went ahead and we tried to you know to share uh the jobs uh through social media right here. And now it's time to actually go ahead and take care of the related jobs right here. Um, all right, so right here, I want to go ahead and I want to display um, the jobs that are related to this job right here, maybe from the same category, for example. Um, all right, but we're not going to display this same job or the jobs that we're displaying the details for right over here. All right, we're just going to display the related ones and we will grab also the count. Maybe we'll grab the count in the next video. Um, all right, so let's go ahead and do this. So first of all, again, as I told you, we need, uh, we need to grab the jobs by the category. We're going to grab the jobs that are from the same category as this job. And we did not actually create a column for the categories um, and the jobs right here. All right, so maybe we, we will add one. All right, so I want to go to the structure. All right, so let's add one. I will add this like after, um, after the gender, for example. All right, so there we go. I'm gonna add a column. I'm gonna make this so it will actually be a category like that. All right, so again, Arabic. And this will be our car. This will be 200. All right, so I wanna save this. Right, so I want to browse so I'm going to keep both of those the same category for example I'm going to keep it like programming like that all right so I want to copy this and I want to also paste it right here all right so there we go um let's go ahead now and try and select the data so I'm going to go to app I'm going to go to controllers I'm going to go to jobs I'm going to go to job controller right there and let's go to our function um all right so I want to go ahead right here displaying related jobs just a very simple comment um all right so we want to display this we want to create um this you know this query or we want to grab the data in the raw way all right because this is going to be very similar a uh, very simple all right, so to, to grab the data the raw way, because there's a couple of ways to grab data in Query Igniter. Well, the Query Builder and the model, and this is the model way, actually. You're just going to instantiate the class and grab the data like this. And there's also, again, the Query Builder, uh, which we might use in this course. And uh, the third one is the raw data, which is what I'm, you know, which is just using raw SQL queries. 
right which i'm gonna do right now uh, but before this we're gonna go ahead and we're gonna go public function we're gonna make a constructor function so i'm gonna go construct like that all right and inside the constructor we're gonna go this db all right so this will actually equal so we're gonna go slash config slash data base so we're gonna connect our database so we can actually um go ahead and do uh and grab the data the raw way so we're gonna go this db we're gonna you know assume that we will have this db uh, right here variable or element and then we're gonna use it to simply connect to our database as you can see right there so you can actually access any kind of table all right so i want to grab this now copy and i want to go ahead right here i want to go uh related jobs this will be equal this db and we can simply now go ahead and use the query function and we can simply pass in any kind of query that that we want so i'm just gonna go right there i'm gonna go select um select all from uh jobs all right where so we want to again we want to grab the data we want to grab all the jobs that are from the same category and we, we don't want to grab this job right here so uh, because we don't want to grab this job so i'm going to go where the id does not equal the id that we're sending in which is this id right over here all right so we we don't want to grab this id right here because we don't want to grab this job you know the id that's coming from the link right here so this will allow us not to grab uh this this same job right here that we're displaying the details for all right and we also want to go uh, and um category right here all right so we, since we want to make this completely dynamic we have to grab uh the category the category right over here the category for this job and if you look at this right here you can see that we actually uh we actually have it you know we can just copy this and we can simply add in um the part right here where we simply go ahead and grab the key for this so the key for this i guess if we go to the views if we go to jobs and if we go to single job as you can see right there we're actually getting this like that all right so um we're getting this as an array um all right a key basically so right here we're gonna go category like that so we're gonna pass in the category right over here all right this category so we can make this whole thing dynamic all right so um and right here i'm just gonna actually order this by something so i'm gonna order the data by uh, id all right descendingly and i'm gonna limit the data to simply like let's see how many jumps that we want to grab maybe we'll grab like five jobs all right so only five results like that all right so right after this we're simply gonna go ahead and we're gonna go get um let's go right here and we're gonna go get result like that result all right like this uh so i want to go ahead right now and i want to test this so i want to test if we'll have an error or not so i'm gonna comment this view for a second i'm just gonna go and dump this data uh so i'm gonna go related jobs all right so let's see what's gonna display all right so we have a problem so a syntax error unexpected content expecting blah 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 should we like remove this all right so there we go all right so save the whole thing let's now go ahead and refresh this all right so it looks like that we grabbed one so as you can see array one which which means that we have a result um so we have we have like right here the id is actually two which means that we grabbed the other job which means that our uh, query is actually working perfectly so 
yeah if we change this from programming to something else that means you know uh that we're not gonna grab it because it's not from the same category um all right so now we can just go ahead and comment this and we can go ahead right here and copy this and simply send this in like that and save so i want to go to the single job i want to go down at the bottom so there it is the related jobs um so we have like uh this allies right here so we will just you know we will delete them and we only leave one so we can loop through it so let's go ahead and delete this um all right so we can go right here and go php for each and we can simply send in the related jobs as job like that all right we can simply copy this and we can use it right here for example um for this part so i'm gonna go actually we need to go base underscore url and i'm gonna go ahead and simply pass in i'm gonna go to the public first slash assets slash images and we're gonna simply gonna go slash and we're gonna cut this and this will allow us simply grab the image actually this is company underscore image like that all right so we're simply going to go ahead now and delete this i'm going to copy this i'm going to go right here all right so and there it is the title of the job oh actually copy this and go ahead right here and this is the company name all right so now let's copy this and go right here so this is the location all right so right here this is the job type All right, so I guess that this is all. We will just go ahead right here and we'll go PHP and for each like that. So yeah, there it is right here. All right, so save this. Now let's go ahead and refresh. All right, so if we go down at the bottom, we should see the other job, which is right here. So if you look down at the bottom, you can see that the, that the URL is still static. So we have to go ahead, we have to go ahead and go to the home, for example, let's pick up the line that will allow us to go to the single page, which is actually right here. All right, so let's go at this part. Let's paste it, let's paste this in. So this will be ID as an object. ID like that. So save this. Now let's refresh. Right, so if you hover over this now, as you can see down at the bottom, you can see that it's going to the slash two. All right, and this is the slash one right there. So this is simply the other job, uh, which means that everything is working perfectly. All right, so I can actually insert another job and I can test this and let's make this job like another category and let's see if it's gonna show up or not. Um, all right, so let's go ahead, insert. Or actually, instead of that, um, let's go ahead and just like copy right here. So for this, I'm going to make this so it will be graphic designer. Like that. So the logo right here, I can simply open up my design if I want to. Um, and I can pick up like Microsoft logo, for example. All right, so I want the logo. All right, so there we go. There is the logo. Copy this. Let's go ahead right here and paste. So I'm going to keep this Microsoft like that. And let's keep the city like 
Um, should we like keep it New York or gonna keep it Cairo? Because why not? And I will make this a part time. I will make all right. I'm gonna keep I'm gonna keep this as it is, and the vacancy I will be one, and the experience one to two three to, to three years, and the salary we can keep it like seven seventy. 102 for example the gender right there it can be any and uh, category right here this will be design all right i'm gonna keep the application deadline as it is and basically everything else is the same i'm gonna go click go right there all right so there we go all right so as you can see right there uh the category now is different so let's refresh this all right so here we go right there so basically it's not showing up because it's a different category um all right so great let's also go ahead and display like the number of the related jobs um so i want to go back to the controller and i want to go ahead right here let's actually go ahead and copy this go ahead and paste so simply gonna go ahead right here and um i'm gonna go ahead like count all result like that and i want to go ahead once again and i want to check if this is going to return the desired actually i want to keep this so it will be count related jobs all right so save this let's now refresh all right so it looks like that we got an error all right so called undefined method so is it like count all results let's refresh save and all right so it looks like that we still have this error so i want to go ahead for now i'm going to comment this i'm also going to comment this and maybe we will take a look at this in the next video or so or should we like try something else let's see um so instead of using this whole function i'm gonna go ahead right here i'm gonna go count count all we're just gonna try this out if it is if it did not work we're just gonna leave it to the next video all right so we're gonna go right here and we're gonna me you know we're gonna use again we're gonna use the count uh method right here to count every result as you can see and we're gonna simply give this an alias using the as right here so we're gonna make this so it'll be count underscore jobs all right so let's you know let's bar down uh this variable right here so i'm gonna go ahead i'm gonna save um limited five yeah so should we like leave the limited five because it's going to keep it yeah that's fine all right so save let's now go ahead and refresh all right so count blah 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 affected results object um let me see save refresh this all right so all right so it looks like that we we will go ahead and delete this and we will also go ahead and comment this part actually remove this part all right so we will leave this whole thing to the next video so this will be all and i will see you on the next one all right now so let's go ahead and try and display the number of the related jobs right over here and actually if i go ahead and if i um try to go to my uh to my home page i will see that also i have to display the related jobs right over here uh or you know the job listed at this part at this day right here all right so let's go ahead and do both of those they're going to be pretty similar of course 
so let me start with the related jobs you know the the you know let's pick up where we left off so i'm gonna go ahead right here i'm gonna use in this part the query builder way to display the count so i can give you a look at the third way of displaying data into codeigniter uh, so i'm gonna go number of related jobs for example it's a very simple it's a very simple uh, variable that we're creating and i'm gonna use the this d d right here i'm also gonna go ahead and specify the table uh so that this table that we're trying to grab the data from it's actually the jobs table right here uh so i'm gonna go where uh the id right here uh does not equal the id that we're picking up of course so we're gonna just specify the same um the same rules as this query all right because we're trying to get just a number of the related jobs all right i'm also gonna go where um the category right here equals the single job and we're gonna pass in the category right here all right so i need to pass i need my double quotes um all right so i guess i guess that this is all i'm just gonna go count all results like that and simply let's go ahead and try to var dump this variable so you can see if um if this will work or not so i'm just gonna go uh var dump number of related jobs all right so let's save now let's go ahead and let's refresh this All right, so as you can see right there, it's actually displaying this. So it says the number is zero, which means that something is wrong right here. So the ID does not equal the ID that we're sending in, which is right here. And where the category equals the single job category right here. Uh, count all results. All right, so what we're doing right here um hmm. all right so let me stop this for a second all right so i got the solution so if you look right here you can see that we need to add it we need the ex that the exclamation equal signs right here you know right along with the id um you know between the single quotations uh right over here all right so this is how you add this so now let's go ahead at this part uh, let's add this in save let's now go right here and let's go at this part and let's go just and try to add this and this will actually do the trick so let's save let's go ahead and refresh all right so we possibly should see one as you can see one related jobs which is actually the number of jobs right here all right so let's also do the do the one in the home page so um i want to go ahead and i want to copy this i want to go ahead to my home controller i'm going to go at this part i'm going to go ahead and paste this in all right so we're gonna go this db table jobs where um and where blah 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 count all the results so what do you think that we should do right here so i'm just gonna go ahead and i'm gonna remove all of this and i'm gonna simply go ahead and pass this and i go number of jobs like that copy this go ahead and paste this in and save and now i'm going to go to the home view i'm simply going to go at the part of the jobs listed so i'm just going to go 
and simply paste this in and save. Let's now go ahead and refresh. All right, so undefined property DB. Yeah, so of course, so it's not in the home controller, it's not finding this DB right here. So we, have to, we have to define this property in order to use it, all right? Uh, so I'm gonna go at this part right here, I'm gonna paste this in, so there it is. So since we're doing a constructor right here, we can simply uh, grab this in any kind of function that we have right here in the same class. Um, all right, so now we can just refresh this and it will actually display, you know, the number right there. So as you can see, three jobs and we have three jobs right here. All right, which is awesome. So do we have time? I guess that we have time. So what we're going to do also in this video, we can go ahead at this part at the single page part and we can simply grab uh grab this um uh grab this dev for example of this design and we can paste it down here and we can display the categories um all right so let's go ahead and actually do that so i want to go ahead um to my single page so we can close the home and I can go to the part where I have this design, you know. All right, so this whole dev, I can copy it. It can go right under the share dev. I can paste this in. Let's save. Let's see if the design is messed up or not. All right, so again, uh, it's right over here and it's not messed up, which is great. Uh, I just need some kind of margin right here so I can go margin top five and this will just give me five pixels at the margin top because i want to keep a space between those this is just bootstrap classes as you can see right there it's now looking better we can actually keep this so it will be just three all right so as you can see right there uh, i guess you can keep it for you know whatever that you like this is not a design course all right so there we go now let's go ahead and grab the category. So I'm gonna go to the same function that we worked with before. I'm gonna go at this part, for example, and I'm gonna go uh, categories. Uh, right here, I'm gonna and actually pick up all the categories. So I'm gonna go, uh, yeah, since we're working with the categories, we did not even create a model for it just yet. Uh, so I wanna create a model for the categories and we'll actually grab the data right away. So let me go to my project and let me go ci-job board and let me pick up get. All right, so I can simply go HP Spark make model. Um, and this model, I will call it category and I will put it um, in a category folder so category like that all right so this should create our model so let me go to the models uh folder and there it is so there it is right there so here we have the table name we have the primary key and all of these so right here the allowed fields are basically where my columns are and i will only have the column of name all right so let's go ahead and copy this and let's go and create this table it will take a second let's go ahead and paste this in there it is the id and this will be an integer will be a length of 10 and there it is the auto increment and there it is the name right there and there it is the bar car and this will be 200 we also have a uh, created that and updated that um columns so here we go the current current timestamp and this will be also um current timestamp and it will uh, and you know and it will also be a type of timestamp so we can grab the time that a certain record is created all right um all right, so there we go. So we can actually insert. So I can go to the jobs and I can simply grab the categories from there so I don't make a typo. All right, so I wanna pick up 
the programming category. All right, I can simply go and grab the other one, which is design. Simply click go. All right, so there we go right there. So now let's display this data. Uh, I want to go back right here and I'm going to go um, categories. Right here equals. Um, actually, let's make this all categories. All right, I'm going to create an object of categories. And I'm going to go right here and go find all, you know, the model way right there. So it will actually allow me to grab all the data. So I'm going to go ahead. I'm going to simply go at this part. And I'm going to add this right here in the compact so I can instantiate it. But we need to go ahead and copy this. And we need to go at this part. I will go categories. And this will be new category right here which is a model that we did not instantiate just yet. All right, so copy this now. Let's instantiate it. Let's go ahead, copy and paste. All right, so there we go right there. Let's save this whole thing right here. Now, all what we need to do is to just copy this and uh, let's go ahead to the single jobs. And I'm gonna go ahead, I'm gonna delete all of these. And I want to go ahead at this part. I want to delete this whole thing. And right here, I'm just going to go. Paste this in. Actually, yeah, we need to loop through this first. So let's go ahead, go PHP for each. All categories as category. All right, so let's copy that. And right here, and let's paste this in. And I'm going to pass in the name like that. All right, so let's go HP in for each. All right, so now let's go ahead and save this. Now let's refresh. All right, so we got a problem. So class, blah, 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 not found category all right so i i got a typo i i made a typo right there so category like that i made a typo also in the class not just in the name all right so save now let's refresh all right so them to read property name and array all right so again it's just an old habit of trying to get them by the object which in fact they are arrays and we should get them by the key all right so save let's refresh this this should actually work so if we go down at the bottom you will see that we have these right here all right which is awesome and we want to actually remove this all right so i guess that this is all for this video and the next one we can go ahead and um I can simply like make those as links so once a user clicks on them uh right here it will actually go to the to the jobs that are that are related to this category all right and right after this we should work on the saving jobs and applying for jobs um so yeah this will be all and i will see you in the next one all right now so let's go ahead and try um and simply well, you know make those as links first so i want you know when the user clicks on any one of those um categories he goes to a page where we simply display the related jobs um all right so i want to change this first actually from job summary to uh the categories all right and uh, actually there is something that we did wrong at this at the uh at the share links right here you know which i just discovered just now that uh if we go right here we will see that i added this you know that i added um the prefix as posts and it shouldn't it should not be posts it should actually be jobs so yeah save this so that's fine now 
Uh, now let's go ahead and make those as lengths. So I'm going to go at this part and I'm going to go here, right here, href. I'm going to simply make this as a hashtag for now. I'm going to close this anchor right here. All right, so splash close this tag. So now let's save. Let's refresh. All right, so let's keep it. And I want to go to my layouts app right here. Um, all right, so let me look up nav link, blah, blah, blah. Um, all right, so that's fine. All right, so now, as you can see right there, there are actually links. Um, so let's go ahead and try and create uh this page that will allow us to simply fetch uh the results uh you know fetch the related jobs by these categories but before we do this even we need to go ahead and access the routes file so we can set up the route uh so i'm gonna go to config and i'm gonna go to routes file and there it is so let me copy this so let me go ahead and paste so of course we will add uh, parameter right here and we need this parameter to be the category uh, so you will grab the jobs by the category of course and and I will go ahead right here and I will make this category like that all right so right here I'm also gonna go and hit the job controller and this will just be uh, the category function right here and I'm going to also leave this so we can single out that we're sending some kind of um, parameter, all right? I'm going to add some, um, I'm going to add also a name for this route. So let's go ahead and paste this and let's go ahead and copy this and let's go to single-job.php and let's go at this part right here. Um, I want to go uh, actually... All right, close this. So I want to go to URL underscore two. Um, and I want to simply go ahead right here and paste this in. So right here, I'm going to go, I'm going to add the category um, name right here. All right, so because we need to send this right here. So this will be named like that. All right, so this will actually be everything. So save this. Let's now go ahead and try and grab the function. Uh, so here it is. Let's go to my controller, and I will go right here and simply paste this in. Oh, let me copy. Let me copy this function. Oh, let's paste this in. Cut this and paste like that. All right, so I'm gonna send in the name right here. And right here, I'm going to actually remove this. And I think that we can simply um, copy this. Actually, count all the results. No. Um, let's copy this. That's fine. Now let's go ahead right here. Now let's paste. So we're going to go. So we're going to get the jobs by the category. So we're going to go jobs by category like that and we will go this db and we will query so we're going to go select all from jobs where the name right here equals uh, the name that we're sending in from the parameter all right and we're not going to set any kind of end so we're just going to delete this we're going to order the jobs by the id descendingly and we're going to limit, you know, actually no limit right here. All right, so we're going to get the result right after this. And we're simply going to return some kind of view. So I'm going to go ahead right here. We're going to simply return a view. So we're going to return the view of um, jobs dash category like that. 
All right, so in the compact, we will just send this. So we are going to delete everything else. All right, so now save this. Let's go ahead and create this view. And again, I do not have this view actually. So we're going to just copy and paste HTML code from uh, pages that we from the from the page that we already have. All right, so let's paste it, this in like that. And um, I guess that if we go to, for example, if we go back to the home right here, so we will need a part uh, or we will need a page that looks like this diff, for example. So we're going to copy the code from the home, uh, this part uh, from the home. All right, so let's go to the home. Um, now let's go uh, all right so we got this part right here for each all jobs as jobs so i guess that this is the part that we actually need to grab um all right so i'm gonna grab this whole section i'm gonna go ahead right here to the jobs category i'm gonna paste this in so also i can go to the home i can simply copy this code go right here so i'm gonna need this at the at the top um all right i'm gonna also go down at the bottom i'm gonna go php this and section like that all right so this is actually all so save this whole thing um and now let's actually grab the data so if you look at our controller so we already send in this so we're gonna go right here and paste this in like that um all right so i guess that everything else is fine because we're trying to send this as an array right here through the compact and we already loop through this and we are gonna grab that job right now and we're simply gonna grab the data like that um all right so i guess that this is this is all so let's go ahead and save this well, I guess that this will actually display an error. So we're going to go for now. It's just zero right here. All right. So save the whole thing. Let's now go ahead and go to any one of these jobs. All right. So if we simply go ahead and hover over any one of these now, you look right here. You're going to see it's going to slash jobs slash category slash programming. So maybe we'll open this up. All right, so my SQLI, unknown column name and where clause. Um, yeah, this should not be name. This should actually be the category. We do not have a name column in the jobs table. So yeah, we have the category column. All right, so save this and let's now go ahead and refresh. All right, so cannot use object of std as array. Um, so, should we use this as an object? So, let's try this out. That's fine. Let's just do it for the ID. Let's, because it's already giving me the error starting from the ID. All right. So, let's refresh this. So, I guess that it's working right now for this. I said, since it's working for this, let's go ahead and do it for the other things right here. So, I'm going to cut this. I'm going to go ahead and paste it like that. All right, so we also have the title and we have a bunch of things right here. So let's cut the title. Let's delete this and paste. All right, so let's cut this and go ahead right here. And paste. And let's cut this right here and also go and paste. Cut this. And paste like that. So save this now. Right, so we use the object way all right so there we go right there we actually got two jobs right here that belong to this programming category which if you look at our jobs you'll actually find two jobs that are that are related to the programming category so let's go right here and as you can see right over here we got two jobs right here um and if we open up this right here we're gonna see that we only one have that we will only have this one job because 
if you look at it we have one job with the design it actually has the id of three if you simply go ahead right over here you will see that this is going to the slash three which means that everything is working perfectly um so yeah maybe it will send like the number of jobs so if i go back and if i go right here i copy this and if I go right here, paste this in. Um, so I'm gonna go number of related jobs. Um, I can just go number of jobs right away. All right, so I can go this DB table. All right, so I'm gonna, I'm just gonna, you know, display the number of the related of of the related jobs, you know, uh, for this, you know, for this category. All right, so I'm going to go for the jobs table. I'm going to go where uh, the name actually, or sorry, where the category. I'm not going to fall for, the, for this mistake again. Where the category equals the category right here that we're grabbing from, uh, from the link, you know, our parameter. And um, yeah, this will actually be all. So I just delete this and simply send this in save so i want to go now to the jobs get here and i want to simply go at this part and i want to go and simply paste this in and save let's refresh this all right so undefined variable jobs by category all right so what's going on yeah course we have to send this in like that all right we have to separate those by the comma so now save fresh this should actually display the number of jobs that are related to this um all right so we can we can go right here for example and we can set this to be we have We have like number of jobs for in um in this category for example and we can go right here and we can also send in the name there's the parameter and we can go in um and name category all right so save this now if we refresh this all right so as you can see we have two uh, jobs in programming category so we can go to uh, jobs all right so as you can see we have two jobs in programming category we refresh this also as you can see right there we have one job uh, in uh, a design category right here so as you can see right there this is the design category and this is the programming category um so yeah this will actually this will actually be everything right here so as you can see in the next video now we should go ahead and we should um try and save this job so this will be all and we'll see you on the next one all right so what i want to do in this video i want to go ahead and i want to allow um i want to allow the people who are serving my website to simply uh save jobs all right using this link right here all right so this will actually be a form so this will be just a button not, not a link um and yeah we will just grab some data and insert it in some kind of table that we will create now and of course this will be hooked to a model and we will do a bunch of stuff in this video so it will probably be a long video um all right so i want to go ahead actually i want to log in first because we're gonna grab some data that are related to the user uh some data that are, that are related to the session all right so i want to go ahead and i want to pick up my email and simply my password all right so if we go log in 
or it says consider it as my username right there i can simply log out if i want to let's now access any one of these jobs um so yeah as you can see right there um let's now go ahead and um do the routes so i'm gonna go to the routes i'm gonna go right here let's pick up this route for example so i'm gonna go right here and just saving jobs all right i'm gonna paste this in uh so right here we'll also send in uh like the number all right right along with this and we will go um could we like send some could we like send this i don't think that we need to send this so it will just go right here save dash jobs all right and this will be a type of post all right so can remove this part and this will hit the save jobs function and i will name this route as save dot jobs like that All right so save the whole thing copy this let's go to our jobs controller let's go ahead right here and just go and paste this in let's copy this blank go right here and paste and now let's cut this name now let's paste it like that let's remove this part right here um all right so i'm gonna go ahead and remove this whole thing now and actually let's do this the the model way all right so i'm gonna go ahead i'm gonna instantiate um let's see we're gonna instantiate a model that we did not create just yet so i will just call this variable save jobs like that all right so i can actually name it like this so i will go new uh saved jobs which is my model um all right so let's go ahead and create this model first uh, so i'm gonna copy this and i'm gonna go ahead right here i'm gonna simply insert this model or create this model in the in another um another folder so this folder i will name it save jobs and the model it itself i'm gonna name it uh, saved jobs like that all right so actually let's give it saved job all right so the models by convention they should be singular so this is why all right all right so now it actually created this model so if you go to models right here you will see uh saved job right here so let me go ahead and open this up uh so there it is the name of the table which is great so i'm gonna go ahead right here and i'm gonna uh, like set up my columns all right so we want to go ahead and want to grab like some of the information about the job itself and want to grab some of some of the information about the user uh right because after we we're not just going to insert this in the database and that will be all we'll also set up some link right here for the user to access his own saved jobs um all right so for example if i go to my if i go to the home um all right so i want to actually go ahead and i want to grab uh the information that are here um that are in these thumbnails or these elements and insert them into my database i want to insert the image uh the job title uh the company and the location and the job type all right so and also they you know the the id that are related to this job all right so yeah uh, but before this i want to go ahead and i want to insert the user id actually and let's go ahead and paste this and copy it and paste it and so i'm gonna go and insert the company underscore image and the title of the job and i will go and insert the company underscore name all right and i will also insert um let me see the location maybe yeah the location and the job type 
display here and also the job id all right like that and save well, now let's go ahead and copy this and go ahead right here and create this all right so let's now paste so this will be id and this will be varkar actually let's give it integer a length of 10 and before we forget we will have it as an auto increment and it will be a primary key so it will actually be unique and we will have the user id all right we can keep it varkar and for the length company image varkar 200 and we'll have the title i guess that all of them now we will it will they will be far car and 200 so let's pick up a couple more columns company name 200 right there all right so the location far car 200 var car 200 job id integer it will be 10 create it add all right so we will have another one So there we go, timestamp, and this will be a current timestamp. All right, so save this. All right, so there we go, right there. So now I want to go ahead, wait right here, and let's pick up where we left off. So um, let's close this, and I want to go ahead, right here, and I want to insert the data. I'm just going to go ahead and create my um my array right there so my array it will handle the keys as the columns in the in the in the table and uh right here the values they will be the values the values that are coming from the inputs all right for example the user underscore id column it will grab its data from um where we will grab it dynamically all right from the os right here so the os class it represents simply um decision all right so from decision we're gonna get the id you know for this guy so also i'm gonna copy this and like paste it multiple times all right i want to open up my i'm gonna open up my um my model again so the company image right there we will grab it from from this and we will grab it from the request right there and the request that has the name of we're just going to go get post and we're going to send in the name for this input which will be company underscore image we did not set up this just yet but we will set it now all right i want to copy this i want to go at this part i want to also uh, right after this i want to grab uh, the title of the job all right i want to copy this paste right here so i guess that you know what i'm doing right now i'm just not trying to, to grab the rest of the data so yeah let's copy this also and paste it right here right here and right here all right, so let's now grab the location. Let's just go Control Alt right away. Now let's grab the job type. And let's go ahead and go for the job ID. All right, so there we go right there. Now, like seven uh let's see for yeah those are seven right here seven columns and save 
all right so we have to add semicolon right there all right so and these right here are seven columns right here all right so the number the number now is fine all right the number of columns is it's fine so right after this i want to go to my object that i just instantiated and i want to simply use the save function so after i grabbed the data i can simply send it in right there as a parameter into this function all right so this should actually allow me to insert this data um all right so right after this i will just go and remove this part i want to go and check if i simply go ahead and save and save this data i will go ahead right here and i will return redirect redirect right here i will simply um try and go to after we save the job let's try and go to the same uh to the same route all right so i'm gonna go um to for example i'm gonna go to the base url for example and i'm gonna go to the jobs slash uh, let's try and grab this link and let's simply try and concatenate the id that's actually coming in of this job well we're not sending any id so this is why um so sh should we like send the id in the routes from the first place i guess that we will need it so this is why let's go ahead and send it send it right here and i'm gonna also send this part right here all right so there we go um let's go at this part and we will pick up the id right here all right so we will now go to this id and that's not all i want to send in also some kind of message some kind of flash message so i will go save right here as a key we will use our uh, with function and the with function should take some kind of key and value right here so we can actually send this value of um job job saved successfully right here all right so save the whole thing now let's go ahead um right here and pick up the code or write the code that will allow us to display this message um you know in the front end so i want to go to a single dash job so this is where we're going to display the message because we're going to this page after we insert um all right so where should we display this i guess that we can display it above the image of the company so we will possibly go right here um at this part so i'm just gonna go hpf um let me see it session get flash data so if we got the flash data right there we're actually gonna go ahead um and we're gonna simply get flash data and i guess that we need to send in the save keyword all right so if we if this exists we're gonna go ahead and we're gonna display it so we're gonna go div class right there um alert alert dash success we're gonna go job actually yeah we need to just copy this and we need to go ahead right here um and we will just send it like that all right so we will close this div now and we'll also close the f statement so yeah if we got if we got this message right here we will simply display it like that that's that's everything so save this and now let's go ahead and take care of the part of the form um so if i go ahead we're actually in the same page yeah we're gonna work this out in the same page so i'm gonna go control f and i'm gonna look up save job 
all right so it's just a button right there sitting right there with no form of course so let's go ahead and do our own form so i'm gonna go form uh, miss it right there a equals post and the action which is the place where uh, the action is basically what we need to hit in order to actually go ahead and um, insert the data so I guess that I set some kind of name for this the routes so the name is actually right there save dot job so I'm gonna go right there and right here I'm just gonna go URL to and right here we will just go ID all right so is it like ID or yeah, it's single job ID, so. All right, array like this and add the idea. Since we already added it and the uh, route, we have to add it also right here. All right, so also gonna set up some inputs. So input right here, uh, type, and we will hide the inputs, of course, but for now, I'm just gonna keep them text. And I also wanna go and set up the value. All right, so these will be, um, let me go for the single job and we can grab the data using these arrays that we already set up before. So the first thing that we will grab is the title. All right, so we're going to copy this and we're going to like paste a couple of times. So what else that we need to grab? Yeah, we need to grab the company image. We grab the user ID simply by using the class right there so we're not grabbing it from some kind of input all right so yeah uh, i want to go ahead right here i want to simply paste this in and let's yeah we got the title so we got the company name um let's actually close this because we do not need them so Let's go for the location. All right, so let's also go for the job type and go for one more, and that will be um, the job ID. All right, so now I think that this is over. So the button right there, blah, 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 and we have some kind of icon right there. So we can remove the icon. You can leave it if. You want to leave it so i'm going to delete it i'm going to keep the the button right there the type is submit and yeah i guess that this this will be all so let's go ahead and go close the form all right so there we go save this whole thing now let's go ahead Right here and refresh. All right, so we got a problem. All right, so and defined it array key company image. So I got this wrong company underscore image and save this. Let's now refresh. All right, so and defined array key ID. All right, so this should not be job id it should actually be id yeah so if we look right here you can see the design is kind of hideous but we're grabbing the data well you know and that's what's important right now so we're grabbing the title the job the image of the company the name the location the job type and simply the id of the job which you can see right over there all right, so if we click this now, you're gonna see class, the jobs. Not, yeah, it's not seeing that. It's not seeing this class. We did not even import it. So I wanna copy it and I wanna go right at the top. Oh, let's try and imp 
copy one of those and paste so cut this and paste and paste once again and save all right so uh i'm gonna check if i'm doing this um i guess that this will be save job yeah they're singular both of them are singular right here you look at them so let's copy this once back and i want to go and paste it right here all right so we can grab the right class let's go try once again all right column company image cannot be null column um yeah yeah of course we did not say the names i also sensed that something was wrong so we have to set up the names also um so this will be title um let's copy this and let's go right here i'm gonna keep pressing alt for each one of those i'm going to paste and just go for a space and let's now go ahead and paste like that this will actually be the job id because again if we look at the column name it's actually job id uh where yeah it's right there job id all right so now i guess that this is fine Let's just separate those. Save. Let's now refresh or just go back. Let's refresh this. All right, so if we go save job. All right, so I guess so job saved successfully. So maybe we need to set this to be like up here. But you know, I guess if we go now to the table. All right, so as you can see right there, the user ID is one, the company image is right there, the title, the company, the location, the job type, and the, even the job ID is right there, which is amazing. All right, so awesome. Uh, so we can simply hide those now instead of text. We can just keep this hidden like that and copy this and we can go for all of them we can just keep pressing alt and clicking and that will actually do the trick all right so there we go right there um so what else yeah i want to keep the part of um part for the message to be uh like up here under the div with the class container so save this now let's go ahead and want to I want to simply delete this part, delete this record, and I want to try and save this once again. Let's just refresh it and click save job. As you can see right there, job saved successfully. We now go here, or it says you can see the user ID is still one, and the job ID is still one right there. So we're simply grabbing this, we're saving this job right here, so which is amazing. In the next video, I want to go ahead and I want to, um, you know, once the user saves that job, we want to validate if he saved it or not. We're going to do a validation for the job saving. So, yeah, this will be all. And I'll see you on the next video. All right. So in the last video, we went ahead and we allowed the users to simply save uh, the jobs right here through this button. Uh, so what I want to go ahead and do in this video, I want to actually... Um, notify or not notify i want to uh, allow the user to also see if he saved this job or not because we cannot simply allow him to save this job over and over and over because this will just flood our you know our table right here for example if i went ahead and if i save this once again you're gonna see that we will have the same record inside our own table so this will flood our own table and it will it will start or it will create a lot of problems in the future so for example as you can see i saved the jobs once i saved the job once again um so this shouldn't happen basically all right so we, we want this guy to only save this job only once so 
we want to check if he saved this job or not and based on this we will display a certain button so for example if he saved if he saved this job and he already did we're going to display a, like a disabled button and tell him like you saved this job something like this and if he if he did not save it um well we will just leave the button like the normal pot the normal button like that uh this that simply allow him to save the job all right to simply do this we want to check for two things we want to check for the user id and we also want to check for the job id so we're, we want to check if both of those are in this table that means that this guy already saved this job all right otherwise uh, he did not save it so we will just display this button like that all right so let's go ahead and do this so i'm right here in my jobs controller um so you can simply pick up like this function or something and i can go ahead right here i can simply paste this in um and i can go right here and let me see yeah i can simply delete this all right i will name this um could we like do, do we even need another function i don't think that we actually need another function we should we should, we should just go to the uh the single job function right here so i'm just gonna go ahead and create a comment i'm gonna go um checking for saved jobs like that all right i'm gonna close this actually so again we want to just check for two things the job id and the user id if they're actually there um so we already have this code so we're we're gonna like return account based on the things that we're trying to check for all right so we're gonna go check for saving um or check for saved jobs right something like this and when i go right here and we want to check in the saved jobs table and when i go where um the user underscore id equals the id that's coming from the session all right so we want to match this with the os user and you want to match it with the id right there um all right so not only this we also want to match it with um uh with like uh the job id so we're gonna go job id right there equals um the id that's coming from up there from the link right there you know this parameter all right so based we're gonna return a count all right so if the count is one you know we should actually we will display something all right we will go to the view and display something and if the count uh, is not one we're also going to display something else basically the, op the opposite all right so save this go ahead and right here and like send this in all right so save now let's go to the single job and go at this part where we have the form so if i go Control f form all right so there it is um so there it is the button so i'm gonna go ahead above this form and i'm gonna go hpf um the check for saved jobs is greater than zero that means that we saved this job all right so if we save this job i just want to pick up this button and i'm gonna go ahead right here i'm gonna paste this in so i'm gonna make this button simply this able like this all right i'm gonna simply go saved jobs uh, you saved this job for example so i'm gonna go you saved this job like that all right so yeah else that means that we did not save it so i'm gonna go hp else all right so we're gonna display the form with the whole button right right here uh so i'm gonna go ahead right under this i'm gonna go php and f like that all right so there we go right here um so yeah so again this right here should return a number a check save job all right so it's gonna return a number so 
the number might be one or zero so if it's one that means that we got the user id that you know that that we got a value in the user id column that's matching with the id that's coming from the session and i also got a job id um uh, value in the job id um column right here that's matching with the id that's coming from the link so if both of those are matching that means that we have this job that this guy saved this job so the count all the results right here it will return one so if we go right here and if this returns one you know which is greater than zero that means yeah that this guy already saved this job so we're going to display the disabled button otherwise we're going to display the form right here with the button that will allow us to save this job this job all right so i hope that makes sense so if i simply go ahead and refresh all right so as you can see right there you see it this job and that's because this guy already saved this job and there is the record for it actually so let's go to another job basically all right so if we go down the bottom right here you can see that he did not save this job because we do not even have any kind of record for for this job we only have the job id one the user id is one and the job id right here is still yeah the the user id is it's still one but the job id it's still two right here so this is why we we still have this if we simply click on save jobs as you can see job sa saved successfully if we go down the bottom you can see you saved this job so we cannot simply do any other action we cannot save it again uh, i want to actually go ahead and i want to browse this all right so as you can see the user id is still one but the job id is actually two right here which is amazing so yeah that means that this whole validation thing is working perfectly um so yeah so in the next video we probably should take care of the apply the apply now so we will apply to jobs um all right so this will actually be everything where actually maybe we will go and fix the link of these uh, right here so i'm gonna go to layouts app.php because i want to be able to go to the home so i'm gonna go ahead right away i'm gonna go url underscore two i'm gonna make this home all right so and this is the name of the route all right so right here also i'm gonna go at this part and i'm gonna make this so it will be so it will go to the home and save this so we do not have uh, a name for the for the route link for the you know for the home so i'm gonna go ahead right here i'm simply gonna add it so there we go save this let's now refresh all right so now if i click this i can simply go to the home right th right there and i can simply click the logo and or the brand i can simply still go to the home um all right so yeah this will be all and i'll see you on the next video all right so i guess that this video will be the most important one in this course because we're going to be working with with we're going to be working with the apply now button so what this will do basically is just grab the information about the user and his cv uh, that's already right there that he already uploaded and you might say well, well we did not even upload anything just yet and i will tell you yeah we did not actually we're just we're still gonna create a column in the user's table and we we will name it cv uh, and we will set some kind of dummy data for it and then we will go from there all right so uh, but, but again this will just be like uh, i would say 90 percent of the you know 90 percent it will be like creating some data in, into some table and that will actually be uh everything all right it is it's not that hard to do all right it's not a big deal so let's go ahead and try uh to do this so let's go to my users table for example and i want to go ahead and, to the structure and i want to add like a cv right here cv column maybe we will add it right after the username all right so we're gonna name this cv right there we're gonna keep this a var car of 200 and right here we're gonna set a default value and you might say why well basically if we did not set the default value for this once the user try you know let's say if we register to a new user this will actually show some kind of error 
all right so um, you know either we set some kind of default value right there or we actually set it in the code all right in the package itself but i'm not going to go ahead and do this I, I would rather do it right here because it's it's actually a lot simpler and easier all right so right here to set a default value for this i'm going to go as defined so we're going to set the cv for every user for, you know as um cv uh not uploaded yet not uploaded yet because he did not you know we're not gonna set just a, a weird name we're gonna set something like that all right so we can actually validate for it later so we're gonna go ahead and save this all right so there we go right there if we go now to browse we will see cv not uploaded yet so once we go ahead and allow the user to up, apply for this job uh we're gonna go ahead and we're gonna check right here if you know we're gonna check for the cv so if the cv contains this this text that means that this guy did not upload his cv just yet all right so we're gonna go ahead uh, we're gonna go ahead and tell him something like go ahead and update your cv um with a pdf for example so we can actually upload your uh so we can upload your cv all right uh, otherwise we're not well you know um yeah so basically we're going to send him the message and he's going to go ahead and update his cv uh so we can upload his cv right away all right so this is what we're going to do in this video uh so we're going to go ahead right now and uh to, you know if we go back to the routes basically we can copy this link and we can go right here we can go applying for jobs and paste the sin so we're gonna go apply dash jobs all right and we're gonna send in the name that's fine um and right here i'm gonna go ahead i'm gonna go uh, apply jobs like that we're gonna send in the id and right here i'm gonna go and set in a name right here as apply that jobs and i'm gonna simply go ahead and copy this and go to the jobs controller all right so we will go right here and simply paste this in um all right at the at this part right here we can copy this function and we can perform this so now let's go ahead and paste this in cut this and let's paste it right here so we will have an id as a parameter so that's fine and i want to go ahead and i want to create another model so we can actually handle this you know uh, the applying for jobs so i'm going to create a new model so open up your terminal and i'm going to go um right here so i want to create another folder which is apply uh job or applied job right here and i'm also gonna keep the name of the model as the same of the folder so i'm gonna go ahead copy and simply paste like that all right so i'm gonna simply separate this uh, slash and i'm gonna remove this slash um all right so there we go right here all right so we added an e we added an e so we made a typo uh so i want to go to app and i want to go to models I want to go to this right here. I'm going to rename this so they will actually be apply like that. All right, so I want to go ahead also to the class and I'm going to remove this E. So now let's go ahead and access this. So we'll also remove this from here and I'm also going to copy this and change this right here. So this is basically the folder name and we changed it. And this is basically the class name which we changed right here. The class name should match um, the file name. All right, so I also want to change this right here. Um, all right, so this is the name of the table, um, the allowed fields right here. They will be a lot similar to a save job. So I can go ahead and you can simply copy all of these. And I can go right here, simply paste this in. So we want the user id we want the company image the title the company name the job the location the job type right here and the job id and we also want the cv of course 
and we want like the title of this guy you know the job title of this guy so we can go job underscore title right here all right so we have to create also some kind of column in the user stable for this and we're going to create in a second all right so copy this copy all of these right here and when i go ahead and want to simply create this table now so copy this go ahead right here simply paste this in this will be id this one and it will be an integer and and it will be an auto increment all right and let's go ahead and pick up the user id will be an integer 10 company name or symbol sorry company image so we will go right here all right so this will be come any like that all right so this is kind of annoying so all right so did we set it like wrong also it is save jobs so i guess yeah we set it wrong right here um but the weird thing that it was, it was actually saving the job so let's go back let's check out the column name let's see if we set it wrong or not so the company name yeah we set it no we're setting it right right here you know but uh, it it inserted it inserted the data uh this is company image yeah they're, yeah they're they're basically the same so the company image is as the company image right there all right so we can keep it at table so we do not miss so we do not mess up anything so this right here it will be company uh, image like that we will have the title um all right so this will be 200 we also have the title we have this as a var car all right we're gonna like insert a couple columns and let's go ahead and go for the var car and let's go ahead right here var car all right because of course we're gonna display the jobs for every user the jobs that he, uh, he that he applied for all right so this is why i'm inserting all of these details about the job all right so now let's go ahead and make this actually be an integer it will be 10 uh so we will have the cv also the cv will be a var car it will be 200 the job title and var car right here 200 All right, so we also have the created ad. This will be a type of timestamp. Copy this. All right, so there we go. All right, so now we are, we created our own table. Let's now go ahead and also I want to go to the users. Uh, I want to go to the, to the users table and I want to add the job title. So um, I want to go right here the structure. I want to go right after the CV. Let go. So you can go job underscore title like that. This will be a var car two hundred. Again, we need to set a default value for this. So I'm going to set this as defined. So the text right here is the one that's going to be inserted once the users register for a new user. You know, once anybody on our own web app register for a new user. So I will keep this like no um, job title for now. Or simply no job title. All right, so click save. 
earn it so i guess that now this guy would have a job title of no job title so we will also order him to update uh those two all right so we're gonna check for both of them and we're gonna tell him to update uh, we're gonna tell him to update these right here or all, all right so what we need to do next right here is try and insert the data all right so job title all right so did we get anything done in the apply job so i guess that we did so now let's go ahead right here and save this model and let's go back right here i want to go ahead i want to pick up the name right here and let's import this model so let's go ahead and cut and paste right here so let's go down at the bottom of this and let's go ahead right here and paste this in so we will go applied job right here all right so we will instantiate this model so we can actually insert the data so we're gonna grab the user id from the session we're gonna, gra we're gonna grab the company image from these input the input was the company image the title from the input was the name of title the company name also from the name was the company name and the location it will be also like uh, we will also grab it from the name was the location the dot the job title from the job type from the name from the input was the job time the, the job type name and also the job id we'll grab it from the input with uh, the name of job id we also have a couple so we also want to grab this right here and paste like two times so i want to go ahead to the model and when i grab the cv right here so that we will um yeah we we should grab this from the input not what do you think that we like grab this from the input I think that we need to grab this from the input so let's copy this let's go right there and paste so this will be cv all right let's copy this let's go right here and paste so this will be user actually this will be job and let's go right title all right so paste this in so now let's save this whole thing so we want to go ahead and you want to go right here and we will just save this data once we actually grab it all right so um let me see could we grab in you know we can validate for this yeah we can validate for this right here we can simply grab these from the session right away so we'll go CV. Or, hmm. You know what? Let's keep it as it is right here. We'll grab this from the inputs and we'll even validate this. So I want to just go ahead right here and I want to simply. Um, all right. So I want to cut this. I want to go right here. I want to paste. Um, so. I want to go ahead right here and i want to check if the cv and the job i want to validate for both the cv and the job title so again as i told you we need to go ahead and we need to grab the data uh, so we will go and validate for them so if the cv right there is actually equal to the keyword that we set for the default which is this right here and also if the job title is equal for this you know for this data that we set uh, or so or for this text no job title you should simply tell him to go ahead and update those all right so if um if this request job if this right there is equal to if the job title is is equal to the text that we set it to be that means that this guy did not even um he did not uh, update his job title uh, and or we will go right here or like this and we will simply go ahead and add the dollar sign to that we will go 
uh, if the CV right here, the data that's coming from the CV input is simply equal to this data. We will just go ahead back to the user. We will um, actually, this should not be here. So let me cut it and paste it. So if both of you know, if the job title, if he did not update the job title or the CV, we're going to go ahead and we're going to return it back to the single dash job uh, with the ID. And we're simply going to go with something like error right here. So we're going to go and tell him update your job title or CV. like that all right so else we're gonna go ahead and we're gonna save the data so we're gonna go ahead else like that we're gonna simply save the data all right and we're also after saving the data we're gonna go and hit back to the same page but with a different message so we're gonna go something like applied so this will be a message of you applied for this for this job successfully all right so yeah that's fine so save the whole thing i also want to go ahead and i want to um like add in the name the email sorry for this guy so this will actually come from the session all right so there we go so when i go ahead i want to save this um i want to also actually save this in the model and i want to go ahead right here and also save this in the uh, create like some kind of column for this. So I want to go after the job title and simply send this in. So this will be a var car, it will be 200. All right, it's important to insert the email also for the user so they can communicate on an email service or in a mailing service. All right, so um let's go ahead now and set up the part for the form so i want to go to the single job um so let's go right here so where is that at basically i think it's all above this form or even yeah it's right there all right so we might even like copy this um copy this whole this whole form with those inputs and we can we can go right here and add them right here all right so we can go under this form and we can go slash form and simply close this like that all right so the method it's going to be post the action it's going to be apply dot jobs so let's check out the routes um so we want to remove this i we also want to remove this eye. Save. This is the route that we want to grab. Let's go back right here. So there it is. And we also want to send in the ID. All right. So we're going to grab the title. We're going to grab the company image, the company name, the location, the job ID, and the job type and the job ID. So what else do we need to grab? um here it is all right so location job type job id and i grab the cv and the job title and the email actually the cv and the job title so we want to go ahead right here let's copy this and simply paste all right so this will be cv and this will actually come from the session so we're not going to go ahead and we're not going to work with this we're just going to go off a user 
and I'm simply going to go for the CV. like that all right so and i can also copy this i can go ahead right here i can simply paste this in so this will be job underscore title all right so let's copy this and paste it right here all right so there we go os user cv os user and uh, the job title all right so great all right so and i guess the button right there we just need to add the part of the type submit all right so there we go and that will actually be everything so save this um let's go ahead and refresh this All right, so as you can see, no errors. So I just want to keep these right here as, for now, as a type of text. So I can actually see if I'm picking up the right data or not. Save. Fresh. All right, so there we go right there. We're actually grabbing the right data right here. All right, all of them are filled. So if I click apply now, all right, so nothing is happening, which means that we have an error. Let's go ahead and try and save this. So nothing is happening still right here. Uh, so what's going on, basically? All right, so the button right there, the type is submit, which is fine. The URL too. Um, the post and missile right there it's post uh, the apply dot jobs and we're sending in the ID let's look check that route alright so looks like that everything is right so what's what's wrong basically apply dot job alright so Right, grabbing the data and right here we're also grabbing the data apply it save right there this message is the one that should be triggered or this link right here uh, so yeah we did not even yeah we did not display the, the you know the part of the messages so this is why I forgot this I want to copy this I want to go ahead right here. I want to copy. I want to go and paste one time and also one time because we have two errors. We have two messages that we need to display. One is the error and one is actually the applied, which is right here. All right, so let's go ahead and paste right here and right here. Save. So let's now go ahead and refresh this. All right, so if we go ahead and click apply now. All right, so update your CV, uh, your update your job title or CV. All right, so the validation is working. So if we go ahead and click browse, all right, so as you can see right there, this guy will not be able to apply for the job because his CV um, and job title are not updated in the user stable. Um, all right, so that sounds that sounds great so uh so what what else do i want to do next i actually want to go back right here or maybe to the single job and i want to go ahead i want to make this so it will actually be danger all right so i want to save this let's now go ahead and refresh let's try this once again or it says you can see update your job or, or update your job title or CV. So again, this guy will not be insert uh, unless he update his job uh, title and CV. You know, because he, we cannot simply insert the CV as a text like that. We need to insert some real 
a CV, like maybe resume.pdf, you know, a name of a file, a name of a PDF file, maybe. Um, so yeah, in the next video, we should go ahead and we should like set up some kind of PDF file in some folder and simply insert its uh, insert its name right here. And we will also uh, like change the job title and we will apply for the job right away. This was just a very simple validation video. Well, I would say it's not, it's not that simple, but you know, we have to do it. So yeah, this will be all and I'll see you in the next video. All right, so in the last video, we went ahead and we allowed the user to simply, um, you know, we set up, we set, we set up the form for the apply now, you know, simply the, the users can apply for this job. Um, we set up these uh, inputs right here. We set up the model. We set up the function right here, and we did a bunch of things. So uh, basically, for the validation, actually, if we go right here, yeah. So uh, for for the validation, we made it so the user will not be able to simply uh, apply for this job unless he is uh, unless he updated unless he update his data first. His data for the CV, so he should upload some kind of PDF, and his data for the job title right here. Um, all right, so we will simply go ahead and we will create a page for the user to simply allow him to update his profile. All right, because by default we made it for every user that we will insert these right here. All right, and before he goes ahead and apply for a job, he need to update uh, those. So what I want to do ahead, what I, what I want to go ahead and do this video, I want to simply go ahead um, and like change this uh, maybe in the database, you know, and change the job title also. And I want to see if I'm actually uh, applying for the job or not. And in the next couple of videos, we will allow this guy to simply update his own data. Um, all right, but I'm going to update it right now manually. Um, all right, so for the CV first, go ahead and grab any kind of uh, PDF file that you have and go ahead and copy it and I'm gonna go to the C drive I'm gonna go to my project uh, root folder all right so there it is I'm gonna go in inside the public and inside the assets I'm simply gonna go ahead and create the folder so we can save the CVs for these users and this right here is the CVs folder so I'm just gonna go ahead and paste this in so there it is cv.pdf just grab any pdf that you have um all right and i'm simply gonna go ahead and i'm gonna copy this and simply go to the users where we have our cv uh column now let's see let's just assume that this guy updated his own uh cv so he updated it with this cv.pdf file right here all right and let's assume that he also updated that job title to something like uh web developer like that all right so there we go right there uh so if we actually refresh this all right so as you can see right there they're actually being updated right here so i can simply go ahead and i can hide those um actually instead of web developer let's keep it like product designer or something um all right because this will be applicable right here so it will have the product designer job title and he will have this cv all right so we can simply now um edit the view assembly make the, to hide those so we're gonna go to the views and we're gonna go to the jobs we're gonna go to the single job right here and let's look up control f apply right here so there it is the part all right so i'm gonna go ahead just keep pressing on uh, alt on all of them and go ahead and like that and save all right so now let's refresh this all right so there we go right there so let's try and apply for this job i'm gonna go ahead i'm gonna click apply now all right, so as you can see right there, you applied for this job successfully. So if I simply go to my um, applied jobs, um, or you know, we could have changed it, kind of sh we could have changed this to something like applications, but that's fine. Uh, so as you can see right there, 
uh, we actually got the data. So we got the user ID, we got the company, uh, the company image. Let me see. The company image is not it's not grabbing the data for this for this, but I'm gonna go ahead. I'm gonna change. I'm gonna look at it, and we will solve it. But as, as you can see, the title we grabbed it. We grabbed the company name, the location, the job the type and we grabbed all of this information there is the cv right there and there is the job title um the email and all of that so yeah this is this is how it will go so um i want to go ahead um let me see um yeah we want to look up the part where we have the company uh, the company image all right so let me go to the structure and let me go ahead right here so the company image all right so i want to check the part of the model all right so company image there there is the model and the single job let's paste it right here all right and this will actually this will be I guess um hmm. I guess that we need this to be if we go to the jobs all right so company image right there all right so both of those are okay so Let's go now to the controller. Uh, let's check out the part of the controller. So company. Yeah, so this we need so we need an end right there. So we got we got the problem. It's it's right over here. It's in the column name. Alright, so save the whole thing. Now let's go ahead and refresh. So let's let's try. All right, so this is again my VBN. So I'm gonna close my VBN. All right, so I'm gonna go ahead. I'm gonna refresh this. I'm gonna click apply now. All right, so as you can see, I applied for this job successfully. We go ahead and click browse. Actually, we wanna go to the applied jobs. All right, so there we go. Right there, we actually got the company image, and it's right here. All right, we just had a typo at the column name inside the controller that's all everything else it was fine um all right so again i want to do the same validation for the applying jobs you know just like what i did in the um in the saving jobs right here so we cannot allow a user to simply apply for a job twice because again this will just flood our own database and it will click and it will create a lot of problems in the future um so i want to go ahead and i want to uh, do the same check right here. So, uh, let me actually go ahead to the single uh, the single job function right there or the method. So, uh, if you look right here, this is checking for saving for saved jobs. So the code it will be similar. So this right here, we will go checking for applied jobs all right so right here we're gonna go check for applied jobs like that all right so right here we're gonna go this db table and we're gonna check for the applied jobs table all right so let's pick up the name of this table so we're gonna check if we have the user id which equals to the user id that's coming from the session and if we have the job id which is which is coming you know and we're gonna match it with the id that's coming from from the link right there the parameter so if both of those are there in the job in the applied jobs table right here um that means that this guy uh, applied you know, this guy applied for this job right otherwise you know and if this guy applied for this job we're gonna go ahead and we're gonna like you know show some kind of disabled button 
for example you applied for this job you know already uh, and if he if we did not find both you know matching values for the user id and for the job id uh, we're gonna go ahead and we're gonna simply you know keep this button right there which is to apply now so this guy did not apply for this job so he has the right uh, to apply for it all right so basically it's the same thing as for the saved jobs right so save this let's go ahead and of course this will just return some kind of count right some kind of number it will return one if we applied for this job and it will return zero if we did not apply for it all right so um let's go ahead and pick up for example we're gonna pick up this part all right and we're gonna go right here I'm gonna go ahead and paste all right so this will actually be check for applied jobs like that all right so if the value right here is greater than one i'm gonna go ahead and we're gonna um send this button so this button will be disabled but it will be something like you applied for this job or it's something like that um and we will go uh, all right so if this is not greater than zero that means that's actually zero all right so we're going to display the whole form with with its button all right and we're simply going to go ahead right now and we're going to end this f all right so this will be everything save the whole thing let's go ahead right here and refresh all right so the disabled button should actually show up as you can see right there because we already applied for this job um all right so this is why this should actually show up if we for example if we go to another job you know as you can see right there we can simply apply for this because we do not have a record right here uh, at this table you know that shows that we applied for it if we simply click apply now so as you can see right there you applied for this job successfully and and that's because it already found a matching values for the user id and for the job id right here um so yeah this is how this will go all right so i guess that we finished everything right here maybe we will show this image i would say that we finished this single job page which you know almost always has the most functionality in every web app that you will ever create um all right so i want to go ahead to at this part and i want to look up this image so i can actually show it or I can display it dynamically so we can actually finish this up. I guess that this is I guess that this is it. So single dash job. We copy this. Alright, so there we go. So there it is, the image right there. Alright, so we will go PHP echo url actually base underscore url and we will go to the public folder flash uh images actually assets before images flash images and we will just go ahead and cut this actually and paste so we already have the images so let's delete it right there and that will actually be everything so um i want to go ahead right here and i want to simply close this so save now let's refresh that all right so still we're not getting it so what did we do wrong so we're going to public echo base url we're going to assets we're going to images slash blah 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 All right, so we want to go ahead and you want to look up this through the inspect. And let's see what I'm doing wrong. All right, so possibly this is another image or something. I don't know. So let me try and look up this image. I'm going to go ahead. I'm going to paste. All right, so there we go. 
php echo base underscore url public images assets first slash and we're simply going to cut this and save now let's refresh all right so there we go we got the image right now so there it is um and yeah this will actually be this will actually be everything in the next couple of videos we're gonna go ahead and we're gonna work with we're gonna display the data first for the for the user you know using the profile um using the profile page and then we're gonna create a page for updating the data so he can actually update his own uh, cv and he can upload a pdf file and we will also allow him to update his own like job title and we will actually go from there so this will be all and i'll see you on the next one all right now so let's go ahead and try um and grab the data uh for the user you know using a profile page right here a, a public profile page um all right so we already have you know a link for it right here but i would rather keep it right here so it will actually look a lot more cleaner um all right so let's go ahead and let's go to the routes now let's try and create this so i'm gonna go to um the routes right here so i'm gonna go ahead and pick up uh this link for example i'm gonna go right here i'm gonna go users like this because this will be the user's pages and right here i'm gonna actually uh choose a prefix for this which is the users right here all right i'm gonna go public dash profile like that and i'm gonna send in a number actually as a parameter actually let's grab everything by decision let's not send any kind of uh parameter so uh we will actually save everything uh, or we will save ourselves from you know taking some time to do some validations all right so i'm gonna create a new controller and this controller it will be in the users controller and this controller will be we will give it a name of users right here all right so and i will keep the function as public profile function right here um all right and i will give this a name of public dot profile dot users right here all right so it's just this is just the name of the route all right so i'm going to copy this i'm going to go ahead to my project um and i'm going to go ahead to i'm going to pick up my get you can use your command line and let's go ahead and try and create this controller uh, so i'm gonna go ahead right here i'm gonna go hp spark me controller in the users create the users folder first and then uh, create this model all right sorry sorry create this controller so users controller right there all right so there we go right there um so if we go ahead right here um if we go to app controllers and there it is our folder there it is our controller right there uh so i want to pick up the route all right so i want to pick up the function sorry and i want to go ahead right here um i want to import the user model do we even have a user model um well what we need to grab basically is um we need to grab some data for the user so we want to go ahead actually why don't we just go ahead and display everything we will just return a view return view and this view it will be in the users folder and this view will be public dash pro file right here um so we're not going to send any kind of data we can just go ahead and we can display everything right away um uh, you know in the in the view all right so let's see 
if this will actually work or not. Uh, if we copy this and if we go to app, if we go to views, let's create this folder. And then let's create this file dot php all right so if you go to your design right now to your code you will find profile dot html so let's pick up uh the dynamic part or the dynamic body so it's right under uh the header actually yeah it's only one section right there so let's copy it and let's go ahead right there actually paste this in um all right so i want to go to this page we can simply copy this and we can go down at the bottom and paste this in and we can go right to the top and we can pick up the code that's responsible for displaying the header and the section let's paste this like that and let's go ahead and save this all right so we want to link to this and also um in here all right so i want to delete this actually we do not need it and we want we want to link to this route right here so i'm gonna go php well let's even leave php out of the way so we do not need you know if you write it if you start your php like that you simply do not need to write echo if you want to echo something so i'm gonna go right away url2 i'm gonna go for the public dot profile dot users link and yeah and i want to name this so it will be a public pro file like that all right so great now let's save let's go ahead and refresh all right so if we go ahead right here so as you can see right there we'll actually go ahead and we'll access uh this very simple public profile page um so yeah we will just need to grab the data right away for this guy so um let me see right there um actually do we, do we need to grab the data uh do we need like to import the user model for example and all of that i think think that we do so if we go right here we go to app and if we go to models and the weird thing about this that there is no user model right here in the models all right in in laravel they're they're gonna put the user model right here all right but for this for this whole thing right here if we go to the migrations if we go to the seeds right so there's basically nothing in there and that's of course because everything is bundled right here in the vendor so if we go for example for shield and if we go to source um we go to controllers we go to action controller right there all right so everything is bundled in here app controllers with controller session blah 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 um all right so show um i guess that there is no actual uh model you know let's check out we got a folder right here it's models let's check that out so base model user identify token login we got a bunch of them so user model right here so um all right so guess that this is the user model so um shield entities blah 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 big generator all right so um we simply go right here and try and pick up all right so just give me a second all right, we do not even need to use the model because actually if we if we look at the jobs controller you can see that we do not need to use the model to simply grab the data we can just we can skip this and use another way of 
grabbing the data, which is, for example, um, the raw way of grabbing data. Because again, we have three ways of dealing with data: uh, the raw way, um, the model way, the query builder way. So we will use the raw way right here. So sorry for the confusion. All right, so use the raw way well first of all we're going to create an instructor and we're going to go with this instance this db and we're going to connect to our database and by connecting to our database we can simply grab any kind of data um all right so i want to go ahead um where blah 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 count all results all right so we can go ahead right here um so this will get the number of related jobs. This will check for uh, blah, blah, blah. All right, so we can pick up this and we can see what's what's going to go down. That's fine. So I'm going to go at this part. I'm going to... All right, so I want to keep my function like this because I don't like this way of dealing with functions. I'm just going to go ahead. I'm going to paste this. I'm gonna go ahead right here and I'm gonna go user or a single user like that. All right, I'm gonna go this DB. I'm gonna go with the query select all from users. And this is the users table where the ID is actually equal to the ID that's coming from the session. So I'm gonna go PHP actually. We can go right here. We can go os user and we can simply send in the ID like that. All right, so let's copy this. And yeah, we're gonna go we're gonna grab the data where the ID equals the ID right there. And we're not gonna actually leave anything else. That's all what we need, basically. So yeah. Let's go ahead and let's try and just var dump this. So we're gonna go var dump and we're simply gonna send in single user like that and save. All right, so let's refresh. All right, so we got an array of zero, uh, which is not a good thing at all. Because that means that this is not displaying or it's not grabbing any kind of data. So select all from users where the ID equals, yeah. Where the ID equals not equal. All right, so when I save, all right, so we got actually one right there. So we got um, we got our only user right there, which has the ID of one. All right, so great. Uh, so we want to go ahead and we want to simply send in this right along with the compact function. All right, so we want to go ahead and send this in. All right, so now let's go ahead and try and echo out this data. So there it is. I'm gonna close this, and we also want to close this. Um, and this is this is the name right there. I guess that there is something wrong with the background image, so we're gonna uh, deal with this first. So PHP echo base underscore URL. All right, so this will be public slash assets slash and we're simply gonna cut this all right so there we go now save let's copy this right here let's go ahead right here simply go ahead and there is the image looks like that we got quite a bit of work to do so we're gonna go php echo um, and we're going to go base URL right here. We're simply going to go for the public slash assets slash images slash, and we're simply going to concatenate the data that we grabbed. So single user, we're just going to grab the image right there. Actually, we do not have an image. Yeah. We do not have an image for this guy so we want to just keep it like this we're gonna go ahead right here and make this so it will actually be yeah we can leave it as an image 
so yeah i just remember this now so we do not have an image for this guy so um we're gonna create it now all right so let's just delete this all right so there we go now copy this and let's go ahead right here and this is an a username maybe um So we want to go ahead right here, user name. And this is the job title. Job underscore title like that. And this right here is actually um this is this is like the description or something. If we go ahead and if we open up my All right, so there it is. If we click the profile, yeah, we will have also uh, some kind of description, some kind of bio, all right? So we're gonna also create this. So I'm gonna go ahead, I'm gonna pick up this. And I'm gonna go ahead right here and paste this in. So this will be bio. All right, so what else? We also have social media links. Um, all right, so I wanna also copy this. And we're going to also create this in this video. So we got a, quite a columns to create. Um, so this will be Facebook. All right. So this will be Twitter. And this will be LinkedIn. All right. So save. Um, let's now go ahead right here and did we like yeah okay so if we refresh this of course we will get an errors because it will not identify some columns because we did not create them and the first column it did not identify it's the image and that's totally fair so let's try and create those in the user table i want to like create some columns so let's see what you know what's the number that we need to create so we have one, we need one for the image and we need one for the bio and we need three right here for the social media so we'll have to create five more columns um so there we go right here all right so i will create those right after the job title all right all right so let's paste this in var car 200 and right here we will just go ahead for the bio in the bio it will be a type of text and it will be a limited number of characters all right so we want to go ahead and want to pick up facebook 200 right here all right we're going to go ahead and pick up twitter and this will be var card 200 all right so we're going to also pick up linkedin and this will be var car 200 like save all right so there we go right over here uh so we want to go ahead and insert a, a mess you know an image for this user so if i go ahead and let's pick up this image for example i want to go to again my project folder I want to go to ci board. I want to go to the public, to the assets, and we're going to create a, you know, a single folder or a dedicated folder for the user underscore images. And inside it, we're just going to paste this image. And I'm going to go ahead and you want to actually copy this and you want to paste right, right over here. All right, so for the bio, we're gonna go for something like actually let's let's like do a default value for every each one of those because again if we did not do a default value for those we will just um we will have an error once we you know once someone tries to register for a new user because it will tell us that no default value has been set for this all right so we actually want a default value for each and every one of the columns that we created so this is a mistake I made. All right, so for the default value right here, we're going to keep it as defined so we can define it ourselves. 
All right, we're going to paste this in. Let's click save. And right here, we're, we're going to go ahead for the bio and we're going to go as defined. So we're going to go for the bio and we'll go no. Actually, let's go no bio. Um, so let's save also. And right here, we're going to go as defined. And this is the Facebook. So we're going to go no Facebook right here. Um, all right, you can simply type like uh, random things like that. And right here, we will just give it no Twitter. And of course, the user will be able to go ahead and update those. But, you know, we will we will do this in the next video. All right, so right here, I'm going to keep this also. Uh, no link then like that. So let's save this now. All right, so there we go. Uh, I'm going to go ahead right here and I'm going to refresh. All right, so we want to actually go and change the like the image, the, um, the part of the image. All right, so it's actually right here. Uh, this will be grabbed from the user underscore images. So we're going to go ahead and wanna save. And still undefined array key image right there. So I'm going to go ahead and refresh. Undefined array key image. So we already send in the data. Um, should we go right here and just go get? This DB query is select all from users where the ID equals the ID. So save. And let's refresh. All right, so called undefined method get um, query, blah, blah, blah. Save this. Let's go back right here. Let's try to grab this as as an object and save. Let's refresh. All right. So attempt to read property image and array. So why it's not grabbing it as an array since it's already why it's not grabbing it as a key. Let me find it array key image. It's already image right there. So what's what's the problem? All right, so just give me a second. So I, I looked it up and I found a solution. So the solution is actually using the get first row right here instead of the get result. So this will allow us to get actually the first row right away. And we can simply send it to the compact right that like that. And we will go ahead and fetch it now as just an object. All right, so uh, right here, this will also be an object. So this will be user underscore name like that. And I'm going to go ahead right here. And I'm going to cut this. I'm going to paste. I'm going to go ahead and cut this. And I'm going to go ahead and paste like that. I'm going to cut this. And I'm going to paste. All right. Cut this right here. And I'm going to paste like that. Also cut this. And paste. Let's now save this. Let's go ahead and refresh. And this will actually allow us to, you know, grab the data so it looks looks like that we got no bio or we can insert one the image there is something wrong with it so we're gonna go public slash assets slash user images and we're simply gonna grab the image like that um so did we do something wrong with um something wrong with the file names the folder names for example so we're going to you know this this actually yeah, so we, 
we have to add an S for this instead of user image. We're going to keep it user images. So let's refresh. All right, so there it is, the image. So, and if we actually go ahead right here, you can see that these are not, uh, we do not have links for these just now. All right, we need to update those, for example. Uh, so let's go back to the browse. You can pick up, you can install and install this extension, which is um, a corporate Epsom extension. It should give you some fake text. So I'm simply going to paste this in, in the bio. All right. And as for the Facebook links, um, we will leave them as, you know, as this for now. They're basically links. You know, once you provide links, click on them, they will just, um, they will go to the link right away. All right. You know, symbol links. All right. So there it is right there. There it is. The profile page. It's pretty simple. Just an image. A uh, username, um, a profile name right here, um, or sorry, a job title, a bio, and a couple of social media links. All right, so yeah, this is how this is how everything will go, and I will see you in the next video. All right, now so let's go ahead and try and allow this guy to simply update his data. Um, all right, so. We're just gonna create a page right here, update profile, something like this, and we're gonna we're gonna you know uh, equal out or send the data to a, a, to a form in this page, and then we will allow him to simply submit the data, right? Uh, you know, update the data or change the data, and then he can see there will be a submit button, and then he will uh, submit the data in the form, and that will actually be everything, all right? But we're not gonna allow him to update. Uh, the PDF file or his CV simply, you know, this will be for another video. Um, all right, so let's go ahead and do this. But before we want to go ahead and do this, I want to like grab the data based on an, uh, based on some kind of ID for the public profile because I want everybody to be able to access the public profile page. All right, whether he's logged in, logged out, you know, anything like that. Um, all right, so let's go ahead and do this. It's actually going to be pretty simple. So just go to your route and go to the route of, of the public profile and send in slash number like that. All right, we're also going to send in slash one um, dollar sign one right here. All right, so simply save this. Let's go ahead to the user's controller. We're going to send in the ID right here. Um, all right, and so instead of this ID, the idea will be grabbed from here right away. All right, you also need to change the part in uh, the master template. So because we need to simply send in the ID right along with this. So we're going to go us. We're going to go user. We're going to go ID like that. So save. Let's now refresh this. All right, so it will actually send an error maybe because this right here should be, yeah, as you can see, it's a 404 error right there. But if we go back, it actually, okay, so that's fine. If we hover over this now, as you can see, it's going to slash public profile slash one. We simply open this up. So as you can see right there, it's still grabbing the data. And there it is the ID right there of the user which is one and this is the only user that we have actually um so yeah let's go ahead and work with the update now so i want to go back to the routes so we're gonna go right here we're gonna go update user profile data like that all right so i want to pick up this link so we're also going to send in the idea right here uh, but this will be update uh dash profile like that all right and right here i'm gonna go public profile uh, actually this will be update profile like that and the name of the route will be uh update dot profile dot users all right so pick up 
uh, the function and go right here and simply paste this in and we're going to go ahead and we're going to copy this function let's paste you know go ahead and paste like that or it's already have the id uh, so what we want to go ahead and do next we want to grab the data based on the id just like this uh, right here so we're going to use the same query we're just going to create a single user this db query and we're going to select all from the users table where the id equals the id all right and then we're going to get the first row right away but we will go to another page of course and this page it will be update profile all right so unlike the update uh unlike the public profile page the update profile um it will not be accessed unless the user is logged in all right so yeah uh should we actually send an id yeah we might not even send an id so we're gonna go for the id right here um and we're gonna go us you know we're gonna go user and we're gonna go ahead and go for the id right here so the idea will be grabbed from here so yeah this thing was the route was the id right here for this route we do not need it all right so save this whole thing so now again let's create this view and we want to go ahead and I want to go ahead and PHP like that. Go PHP like that. All right. So do we have a design for this? Um, or just simply go ahead and update the data. I don't think that we have one. But we can pick up like a form from here. And we can work our way with it. So what do you think that we need to grab? So if we look at the login.html which we did not use because we generated the views for the login through the shield package. So let's go ahead and pick up these sections. And we only have two sections right here, which are more than fine. Go ahead and paste them. I want to go, for example, to the public profile. I want to go down the bottom and pick up this. All right, so simply end this section. And we will grab the part for starting this section and also uh, starting the header right here. All right, so there we go. Now let's save this. Let's go ahead and refresh. All right, so we want to go ahead right here and we want to link to this in the um, and this part right here All right, so this is the template master so yeah let's go ahead and copy this part and we're gonna link to this right here so this will be update that profile that user so we're not gonna need this id we already send in everything through the session right here all right so i'm gonna go ahead right here and i'm gonna refresh all right so if we look at this we can simply change uh like the HTML text will update. All right, so what's going on? Yeah, we need to go right here. Update. Profile like that. Save. Refresh. All right, if we open this up. All right, so we got, um, you know, we got the page. We got the view, which is great. Let's now go ahead and work with the view. So. Uh, let's go at the background image first. So we want to go basically base underscore URL. And we're going to go ahead, go public. Slash. Um, assets. Slash. And simply let's pick up this whole thing. Let's go ahead and save refresh this all right so for the login right here i'm gonna go something like update user uh, update profile page something like this or update pro file like that um all right we also gonna send this right here 
all right so we can send this part to the home page for example so we're just gonna go url cool and we're gonna send in the route name which is home simply so save this like that now let's refresh this all right so let's see what we need to update basically if i opened up public profile uh we're not gonna update the image also so we're gonna update uh, the username we're gonna update the product designer right here uh, we're gonna update the bio and these links all right so um I'm gonna go right here. I'm gonna set up the inputs. So we're gonna go at this part. This will be user name. All right, and this will be um, the bio. I guess this should be a text area. Um, so all right, right, right after the bio, we need. Let's keep this actually face talk. And I'm gonna copy it. And I go ahead and paste like multiple times link then and this will be Twitter all right so let's look up a text area bootstrap all right so here we go All right, so I guess we got one right here. Uh, so let's pick up this whole dev. Let's go right here and paste this in. So there we go right here. Um, so I will just keep this bio and save. So again, like there are five inputs right here so let's go back all right so one two yeah we forgot the job title basically so one two three four five and we got the job title so we have to you know grab an input also and we have to paste it right here and this will be job title and save let's refresh this part All right, so there we go, username, job title, Facebook, LinkedIn, Twitter, and bio. So I want to go ahead right now, and I want to move to another part, which is the part for, so, you know, yeah, we did not even grab the data just yet. Let's copy this. Let's go ahead right here. I'm going to go for the part, this part. So I'm going to go uh, for the value. going to go value right here. Somebody gonna go ahead. Single user. Let's show the user the data that he needs to update. So we're gonna go username. Copy this. Go right here and go job underscore title. And go right here. Facebook. And let's go right here, link then. All right, so let's remove this T. Let's go right here, Twitter. And this is the bio. So for the bio, we need to paste this in. Actually, in the HTML content part without, of course, the value. Uh, so this will simply be bio like that. So save. Let's refresh. All right, so undefined property job title. So we've done something wrong, and yeah, this should be a job. So you guys have might like notice this error. So let's refresh. All right, so we wanna wanna go for the job title part, and this will not be a type of password neither the Facebook or any of these. 
none of these should be a type of password all right so we're gonna keep them like that uh so save the whole thing all right so there we go right there now since we grabbed the data for this guy uh, we can simply um update it all right so for example um now for example what we want to do now is we want to when i go ahead and when i copy this link and when i paste so we have to now submit the data and to submit the data we have to go post like that all right and i'm gonna keep both of these links the same for the get and for the post all right and of course we will um we will go for this something like submit update data something like this for the function and we're gonna name this route as submit submit dot profile dot users i guess that these are not the best names but it's all i got so i'm gonna go ahead and i'm gonna paste this now and i'm gonna go ahead and copy this function for example and paste all right cut this and paste right here all right so we what we want to do in this video we want to pick up um let me see we want to uh we can use now we, we can use also multiple ways to do this uh we can use like um the model way or we can simply use this way of updating data um all right so i guess that we can use this way right here so we already got the idea because we need the idea because we need to know which user that we're trying to update so this will be grabbed based on the session as you can see right there all right, so right here I'm gonna go update, um, update and simply the username. Uh, sorry, the the table which is users. So update users. That. Um, let me see. Set. Um, right. So this will be a big query. Set username. Equals. To the data that's coming from the username which is username right here right and we're gonna see it, we're gonna set this variable these variables but just in a minute all right we're gonna go um job title or right. just need some kind of comma to separate those we're gonna go job job title underscore title equals uh, the job title we're gonna also need Facebook equals face book and also gonna need Twitter All right, and we're also gonna need, um, let me see, LinkedIn equals LinkedIn. All right, so what else? So I guess username, yeah, we got the bio. So we got bio right here equals the bio. All right, so I guess that this is also where the ID equals the ID right here. All right, and then we're going to get the first row. And let's actually, instead of all of this, let's go ahead right here. And let's send and what's going to go down in this array or in this query. We're just going to var dump this, the, the, the data that's coming. We're going to show it like that. All right, so let's go ahead and save uh the whole thing actually we're not done yet we need to grab the data that we provided right here for these variables so when i go user name equals uh the data that's coming and that is this uh request right here we're actually gonna go get post we're gonna grab the data from the database and 
uh, sorry, we're gonna grab the data from the inputs and the first input right here, it's the username. Uh, we're gonna grab the data from the inputs based on the name and the name for the username input is simply username. All right, let's copy and paste those multiple times. Facebook right here. Twitter. Line 10. And simply bio. All right, so again, all what we've done is just we grab the data from the inputs based on the name. All right, so let's save. So I guess if we go back and let's set up the name. So uh, this is the input, the type of submit, which is the button simply. And the button, I will name it something like update. Or I will give it the value of, uh, of update right here. The value is basically this text right in the input or in, uh, you know, in the uh, button. All right, so for this, we're going to go name. And we're going to go bio. All right. And we're going to go for this input. We're going to go. The name is Twitter. And right here, we're going to go. The name will be LinkedIn. And right here, the name it will be Facebook. And right here, the name it will be um let me see job underscore title all right then right here uh the name it will be user name right here all right so these are the names it's called so for the action i'm gonna go ahead and i'm gonna set the action to my route URL to right here. Let me pick up this route. All right, so let's paste and the method right here is also very important. It's going to be post. All right, so there we go. Save. And now let's go ahead and try this out. Hopefully nothing blows up because I do not like the update query. And I don't think you do. I don't think you don't either. So, so yeah, let's go ahead. And for example, for the bio, we're going to grab something a little more bigger. All right. And we can actually copy this and we can like paste like multiple times all right and as for the job title we're going to keep this web developer instead of product designer all right if we click update all right so my sql exception you have an error in your sql manual check blah 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 near uh near bio if we go back all right, so did we forgot? Yeah, we forgot a comma. So forgot a comma right there. Do not forget your commas. All right, so let's go back. And we still have web developer and we still have the bio. It's big. We click update, call to a member function, get first, oh, get first row on Boolean. All right, so this is not the right function to use, which, you know, just I'm gonna stop the video and I'm gonna grab the new function. Alright, so surprisingly we do not actually need any kind of function. Alright. So this was my old code right here. So simply go ahead and remove the whole function, you know, and we will just need uh the query and that will actually be everything. Alright, so I wanna simply go back and I wanna comment this and right after uh, we update the data. I want to go ahead to the certain uh, the same page and we will actually go and send in some kind of message as you know as we did for like applying for the jobs and saving the jobs and so on. So the code there will be 
right here in the jobs controller um so yeah there it is the code which will allow us to return the message and we're gonna go right here and we're gonna simply paste in uh this whole thing right here all right so after we update we're gonna return back base url we're gonna go back to the users we're gonna go back to uh update dash profile and we're gonna send in the id this id right here all right so we will go back to the same page since we already have an id in the url we actually need the id all right so actually after i update it it gave me boolean true which means that the that uh, the data is updated and if you look at it right there in the user stable you will see that we have web developer and the bio now is a lot bigger all right which is great so i want to go ahead right here and i want to send in the update key and i will go uh user or profile updated successfully like that and save the whole thing um all right so inside jobs we got a single job we go right here and copy this and go right here at the update profile if we go uh, right under the container well, where should we actually place this if we go back you'll actually see um all right so we can place it right here right above the form all right we can go right here and simply place it so we will just send in the key so we'll grab the right message and save all right so now let's go ahead and refresh this all right so after we refresh as you can see we got the data right there which is web developer all right so actually let's let's like change the placeholders for these inputs um so we want to go this is the username for example and this is i guess that this is the job title so we're going to go job title like that and right here i'm going to keep this so it will be face book and twitter or linkedin all right and twitter right there and yeah this is simply the buyer we do not even have a placeholder placeholder for it so we're gonna go placeholder like that and there it is the bio save it's now refresh all right so instead of this job title for example let's try this out and i'm going to keep this web designer and instead of developer all right um and simply i'm going to update all right cannot find a route get for user update profile slash one yeah we're not going to send in the id we're just going to go back to the same page i got confused so let's re remove the id all right so we're going to go back and now let's go ahead and update all right so as you can see profile updated successfully and there it is web designer instead of developer um so yeah actually i wrote it wrong so there it is web designer right there i can simply click update all right so there we go we can update it of course you know to whatever what we want um so if we refresh this now as you can see web designer right over here so this is got updated if you go to, to the profile you should actually see it's updated right there and even the bio is a little bigger all right all right so this is how you update uh the data 
all right for you know for the profile and the next one we should go ahead and we should allow him to simply update um update his own cv because again he needs to update his own cv in order um to apply for jobs right because every you know since every since we're we're inserting some text once a user create and uh, once somebody creates an account on our own web app, we cannot allow him to simply apply for a job with this with this text. He need to he need to upload some kind of PDF file. All right, and I think we discussed this in the past couple of videos. So yeah, this will be all, and I'll see you in the next one. All right, now so let's go ahead and try and update uh, the CV since we allow the user to simply update his data. And most importantly the job title so you can actually apply for jobs um so all what we're gonna do we're gonna go ahead and we're gonna select the data like what we did for the update profile but we're gonna actually update uh a pdf file all right or, or we're gonna update a record that's ready to the pdf file inside our own users um our own users table all right so let's go ahead and do this so we're gonna um we're gonna first go ahead and create a link we're gonna grab this link for example so we're gonna go right here and we're gonna go something like update um cv or user user cv something like this and we're gonna simply paste this in we're gonna go update cv like that all right and we're gonna go right here and update cv like that and right here we're gonna go update dot profile dot update dot cv dot users all right so save this let's go ahead and copy the function name and let's now uh create this function inside our own users table all right so now let's go ahead and try and paste this in all right so all what this is going is going to do is just it's going to return um you know it's going to return a view that's actually everything all right so let's go ahead and paste this in i'm going to cut this i'm going to paste this in like that let's go ahead and remove all of this i'm going to return a view of update dash cv and we're not going to come back to anything so let's go ahead and save and let's go ahead and create this uh view so inside the views right here i'm going to go to the uh, to the users folder let's go ahead and create this dot php like that all right so let's go ahead to the update dash profile let's go ahead and copy this let's paste this right here um all right so all right so we want to delete this because again we only need one input in the page and that will be all so we have our input right here i'm going to keep the type of file i'm going to keep the name of cv that's all all right and we're not going to have any kind of values and we're not going to we're gonna, not going to need even this id right here so we're also not going to need this placeholder all right and this right here will be cv like that and i'm just going to go um at the top i'm gonna go update cv cv like that and cv right here all right so save this and let's go to the to the app.php right here which is our master template and all that we're gonna do we're just gonna copy this link and we're gonna add this uh update.cv.pro.users and right here i'm gonna name this so it will be update cv like that and save the whole thing and let's go ahead now and refresh this all right so as you can see right over here if we simply go and try to access this it actually access this page and it will be like that it's pretty simple as you can see only one uh, input right here all right so great let's now uh, do the part of the logic all right so i'm gonna copy this link i'm going to paste it once again i'm gonna just keep this a type of post because we will use this link to submit the data and right here i'm just gonna go submit update 
TV like that. And right here, I'm going to go uh, submit .cv .user. All right, so save this. Now I want to go ahead and I want to create this function. So just copy this. Go right here and paste. Um, I guess that it will look similar to this right here. So copy it. Go ahead right here and simply paste this in. All right, so I want to cut this function. And I want to paste it right here. All right, so great. So we will just only need one uh, one input right here in order to grab uh, the PDF file. All right, so let's go ahead now and try to write the logic for this, you know, and grab, um, you know, try and update the PDF. So I already have my code right here. Check out the resources section for this code. And you'll find it right away. So after we grab the ID for the for the user, because we need to we need to know which which record to update or which user uh, that we will update, and we will grab the user uh, information by the ID right here, or we're gonna specify it by the ID, right? And right after this, we're gonna go file, all right? And this code will simply allow us to get the image, all right? We're gonna use the git file instead of git post, and that you know that only makes sense because we actually want to get the file all right and right after this we're going to go ahead and we're going to go file move and we're going to move this file to public slash assets and we're going to move it to uh cvs to the cvs folder all right if we go to the public and if we go to assets you will find yeah the cvs folder right there all right so we're going to move it to this folder when we upload because you're not going to just set up some kind of name uh inside our own year inside your own database or you just insert some text inside your own database you need to move the file physically and put it in another place let's see this this folder right here all right so this is why i wrote this code basically so just go ahead and you know write it along with me so right right after this we're going to go ahead and want to grab the name of the file all right so i'm going to go ahead i'm going to go name or file name you know whatever that you want to call it and we will simply go something like um, file right here, get name. So this is how, or get client name. All right, so this is how you get the name of this file. And simply, this is what, this is, you know, this is the variable that we need to insert inside our own query. All right, so we're gonna go update users, set username. Actually, we only need one, so let's delete all of these. All right, so we're going to go set CV as the file name right there. All right, where the ID equals the ID. All right, so this is actually everything because, again, we're just going to update the CV uh, right there. All right, so right after this, actually, I want to keep this so it will be update CV like that. All right, and right here, I'm going to go if update CV. So if this worked right here. I'm going to go ahead, I'm going to return, redirect back to update uh, dash um, CV. All right, we're going to go with uh, the update. All right, we're going to go profile. Or we're going to go CV updated successfully. All right, so save this. Let's now go ahead and try and grab the code that's related to this message. So we're going to go to jobs. We're going to go, actually, I think we already have it in the update dash cv so yeah, i think we have it right here copy this and let's go right here all right and i want to go um and set this like huh yeah we already yeah we already have it right here because we already grabbed the whole code of this page so yeah that's fine uh so let's now go ahead and take care of uh and take care of the form all right so let's close this and let's look at the form so the form is submit.profile.users which is not the right route the right route is here so let's go ahead and paste it all right and the method is simply post which is fine uh so the input right here the type is file and the name is cv all right and right here we have the type of submit for the 
for the input, which is simply the button. All right, we're gonna go right here. And I wanna actually set this as CV, all right, because this this is simply the name of the input, and this is and this is how we're gonna get our file uh, or move our file simply. All right, grab it from the input and save the whole thing now. All right, let's try this out. So I wanna go ahead and refresh. All right, so we look at our public, we look at assets, TVs, we're gonna see that we only have that cv.pdf file right here. All right, so let's try now and grab another file, another PDF file. So I'm gonna go to D right here. Just grab any other PDF file that you have. I'm gonna go, for example, um, let me see. I'm gonna go to the desktop. I'm gonna pick. I'm gonna pick resume.pdf. For example, I'm gonna click update. All right. So as you can see right there, a profile updated successfully. So maybe we went back to the wrong path right here. You know. So, but we're we're gonna change this in a second. But let's go ahead and let's check out if this right here is is updated or not. If I click browse or cv.pdf all right so it's not actually updated so something is wrong right here oh let me check that out update user set tv file name equals file name where the id equals the id um submit cv blah 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 all right we want to save this right here um we did not save this so this is submit.cv.users which is fine all right so right here we're gonna go ahead let's try this once again uh let's check out our all right so we're going to update dash cv which is simply the link um let me go back to routes update dash cv all right so all right so i guess that this is fine let's now go ahead and refresh this let's try let's see if the file is moved or not to the public or to our own to our own cvs folder it's not being moved so let's try this once again i want to go ahead and i want to pick up the resume.pdf right here file and let's click update all right so call to member function move on null move on that so it's not even grabbing the file all right so um let's go back to update dash cv so all right so the name is cv and the type is file so so what's wrong basically so url to submit dot cv dot users and the method is it's post so what's going on update cv query get client name this request get file and basically we're passing in the cv all right so cv We go back cv equals the file name all right so i i don't get it basically everything sounds right let's go ahead back and let's go ahead and refresh this All right, so I'm gonna refresh this now. Let's go back to the home. All right, so why the username is not showing up? All right, so let's check out the app right here. So did we do something wrong? Update.tv.users, which sounds fine. All right, so. Let's try once again. All right, so blah, blah, blah. Move on now. All right, so it just gave me a second. All right, so the problem was actually that I did not include the ink type right here. So it 
was not grabbing the file. They need the ink type right over here in order um, simply be able to upload a file with your form. So go ahead and write this right here. Alright, I also did something in the controller which is I had a typo in the word client. Alright, so and I also made the move um, the path to be like this public slash assets slash CVs right away. Alright, I don't think that matter you know this change matters that much. What it matters is this right here the name of the function and this right here the ink type. Alright, so again you need the ink type multi pro slash form data in order to upload a file with your form. Alright, so this is why it was not actually grabbing any file name because it's telling me that you're trying to set up some null data to the move function. So it was not grabbing anything. So let's go ahead right here. Let's go back. Alright, so now let's go ahead and pick up the resume.pdf. Oh, let's go ahead and update. Alright, so as you can see, CV updated successfully. That's a good sign. We go browse right now. Alright, so as you can see, the text is changed right here to resume.pdf. Oh, let's see if the file is moved to the to its path or not. So if we go assets slash CVs, as you can see right there, resume.pdf, which is our new uh, PDF. So this guy updated his PDF successfully. Um, so yeah, it's it's amazing. So yeah, this this will actually be everything. I don't know basically why the username has uh, vanished right here, but we will figure this out in the next couple of videos. If maybe we go right here, if I try to go Control F5, for example. All right, so it's still not showing up. So let me go back to app.php right here. So echo us user username right here. Um, so if we go back to public profile, if we go back, yeah. So all the data of the for the user is basically vanished right here. So this is why. Um, so we're not gonna allow him to update actually the username because he's not gonna be allowed to simply seem this this uh, you know leave this to be like that. All right. So I'm gonna simply grab. I'm gonna go back uh, to this part right here and we're gonna remove the whole thing that's related to the username all right so i'm gonna remove this right here i'm also gonna remove the um the input right here so there it is update profile all right so save let's refresh this all right, so I'm gonna set um, the username right here to something like web coding one two three. All right, so save this now. All right, so now let's go ahead and update the job title. So I'm just gonna keep it web designer like that. All right, and I will just grab the bio as a fake text. And let's go ahead and paste this multiple times. So let's click update. As you can see, profile updated successfully. And now I can simply see my uh, username up there. And I can see my data right over here. Um, so yeah, this is how this whole thing works. So in the next video, you should go ahead and should actually like grab uh, the saved jobs and maybe uh, the applied jobs you know the uh, the jobs that this guy applied and simply create some links right here and fetch the data so yeah this will be all and i'll see you in the next video all right now so let's go ahead and try to grab uh, the saved jobs for this guy because we need to know uh, we need basically to show every user that's the jobs that he saved so this should be pretty simple um I want to just go to the routes and I'm going to go right here. I'm going to go uh, get user saved jobs. I'm going to just grab this link, copy like that. I'm going to paste. So I'm going to go saved dash jobs. All right. And right here, I'm going to go saved or user saved jobs. Alright, I'm going to 
I'm gonna give this uh, a name, this route. I'm gonna go um, saved dot jobs dot users like that. All right, so copy this, go right here, and let's go ahead down at the bottom of this. I'm gonna paste like that. All right, and I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna grab, um, for example, let's grab this function. All right, so I'm gonna go ahead right here and simply paste this in, cut this and paste like that. Um, all right, so we're gonna also grab this by the ID, of course, because we need we're not gonna grab all that save jobs for every user, we need to simply get him the jobs that he just saved. All right, so we have to grab this by the ID, so select all from and table is saved jobs like that. Um, where the ID or where actually the user ID equals the ID, if you actually look at the saved jobs. Uh, table you can see that we inserted the user id right here so we can grab the jobs uh, by the id all right so we have to match this with the user id not the id so we're gonna actually we're not gonna get the first row we're gonna get more than one row so this is why we're gonna go get result like that so we're gonna go right here and we're gonna go saved jobs All right, so copy this and paste, and right here we're gonna just go save the dash jobs like that. All right, so copy this and save. Let's go ahead right here and simply create this dot PHP like that. Um, all right, so this will look a lot similar to the part or to the page that we that we have, you know, for the categories right here. So let's copy the whole thing let's go ahead right here and let's paste so we're gonna go right here uh you ha we have blah 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 so it should not be here we're gonna go something like um saved jobs right here um all right so we're gonna go right over here we're gonna simply grab this and paste like that and we're gonna simply grab this as job all right and right after this it should be grabbed like that as an object um all right so so since we grab this array and we just give it an alias we can simply use this alias to simply grab every um every piece of data right there all right so i'm gonna go ahead right here and i'm gonna save now we might get an error but we will see all right let's let's link to this so i'm gonna go i'm gonna copy this and paste so i'm gonna make this so it will i'm gonna make this route so it will go to this um so paste this in and this will actually be um saved jobs and save Let's refresh this. And define the property uh, company underscore image. All right, so let's go right here. So this, is, this should be, yeah, this one is actually with a typo. So this should be company name like that so we want to go let's close this also close this also this so we're going to go right here and we want to make it so it will be like that and this will actually be job underscore id because this is the id of the job all right so yeah let's save this let's go ahead and try and refresh all right so there we go right there we actually we got them right here so there is just something wrong with the image. All right, so image right there. The big company like this again. I just made a typo, so this is why. All right, so define a property company name. Um. So let's copy this. Let's paste like that. 
and save. All right, so we got we got them actually right here, but there is something wrong with the image. So what exactly is it? We're gonna go job company name. Let's just let's look at this. You know, using the inspect. Um. So go ahead right here slash just giving us this Bama right here. Um, it's giving us like yeah yeah sorry this is this should be the company the company image not name so yeah let's save this all right so again did we even save that yeah it's right here so all right so save this all right so sorry for the confusion now it's actually done so as you can see right there we have two saved jobs so yeah awesome so i want to grab um there's something wrong right here with with simply this um this part it's showing the header right here but it's not showing it right so and that's because we need some kind of background image so the background image you will find it in the update dash cv and there it is this is the section all right so we want to go right above this part and we want to go right here i'm going to go uh saved jobs and i'm going to go right here and simply paste this in and save and refresh all right so there we go right there so possibly we have the same thing in the job dash categories right here all right so we want to go ahead and also paste this right here um so yeah let's go ahead and try and save this let's go to any one of these jobs all right and let's try to access this page the job uh you know the categories for the job page as you can see right there you know now we have a background image so we can actually see the username the nav bar and all of that so i just want to um just want to change this part from save jobs so the name also i'm going to change this right here and save all right so there we go right there all right so amazing um so yeah, uh, so that we have time, I think that we can work our way through the next link, which is displaying the uh, the jobs that this guy applied for. All right, so let's go ahead and get back to routes. We we'll get user, save jobs, and applied jobs right here. Let's copy this and go right here and paste. So this will go to um applied jobs like that all right so user this will be user applied jobs and this right here will be save the jobs that users this will be applied dot jobs dot user so let's go ahead and save this or, or copy this let's paste right here real quick we're gonna copy this very similar let's paste let's cut this and paste all right so we got the id right there we're gonna go applied jobs and this will be select all from applied jobs and wh where the user id equals the id so that's that's fine let's now send this in we're gonna send it in to applied dash jobs which is simply going to be our view so we're gonna go right here and we're gonna, gonna paste and dot php like that so we're gonna go to the um the save jobs page let's copy the whole thing and let's paste so we're gonna go ahead right to the top and we're gonna go to jobs 
you applied four um or you apply it to you know whichever vocabulary that you want all right so i'm going to simply copy this and also paste it right here all right so all right so we also have it right here so we're going to go right here and we're going to send in this array so we're going to make it so it will be um all right, we're going to give it this object right here, a name. We're going to, going to give it this as an alias. And simply, we can use this alias to, up, you know, to display our own data using just a column name. All right, so save the whole thing. Uh, I guess that we need to also go to our uh, .php. And we need simply copy this link and save. So this will be applied jobs like that. So this will be... Copy this. Let's go ahead right here and paste this in and save. We open this up right now. So undefined property company image. So all right. So we go right here to the apply jobs. Let's check out. Maybe I did not do the typo in this yeah in this part i did not do the typo so this is why all right so let's go ahead and save let's refresh this all right so there we go right there you up you up the jobs that you applied it that you applied to and these are the ones that i applied to right now um i'm gonna go right here i'm gonna make this jobs it's jobs and this also jobs like that all right and refresh all right so there we go right over here so yeah this this will be everything and i will see you on the next video all right now so let's go ahead and try and validate those pages i think that we created all the pages that are related to the users like the public profile the update profile cv and showing the save jobs and the applied jobs so basically we finished everything right here but we need to validate those because right here we cannot allow the user to simply access the update profile the update cv or any of these four pages right here all right so he cannot interact with those unless he is logged in because their the basic their logic depends on the session all right so if we try to access them without you know without a session an error will pop up um all right so before this, I want to actually, in the public profile right here, I want to show a button with this guy's um, CV. All right, so so everybody can, in you know, in the public profile, everybody can upload, uh, sorry, everybody can download his CV. Um, all right, so let me go to the public profile. Let me go to the views, for example. And I want to go to users. So let's go right here. And just under um just under the image right here maybe i will do a button all right so i'm gonna go and paste the sensor instead of this image i'm gonna go um all right so i'm gonna go with you know with an anchor right here each ref i'm gonna go um simply go to base underscore url all right i'm gonna go to assets or even before assets i'm gonna go to public slash uh assets slash cvs right here slash and we're simply gonna concatenate this guy's cv so i'm gonna go single user i'm simply gonna grab the cv like that so yeah i'm gonna go right here down load his or download cv right away right i'm gonna go slash e and that will actually that will actually be everything all right so save um actually i want to go right here i want to set the class for this 
So I want to go PTN, PTN dash success and save. Let's refresh this now. All right, so there we go right there. So I guess it will be better once it's under uh, under the username, actually. Um, so let's cut this. And I want to go... Um, if we paste this here. All right, so I want to also go text dash white. So to make the text white so save and in refresh all right so i guess it's better now if you click on this we'll be able to simply uh see this pdf right here all right so you can actually download it all right you can simply download it like like in this right now all right so yeah this is you can simply click this All right, so you can simply download this like that. All right, so I want to go ahead right here. Let's now go ahead and try and validate those links. All right, which is the main thing of this video, or which is the main purpose of this video. Um, so yeah, let's go ahead and try and log out. All right, so there we go right there. I want to go just to the home. All right, and if I go now, slash users, slash, for example, if we go and update the CV, um, right here, I don't want to even, I don't want to allow him to even uh, update the CV, because if we try to update it, you know, we will go ahead and get an error, because we're trying to grab an ID once we update this. All right, if you remember in the query. Um, so let's go ahead and write the code for these. So the code, of course, it's a backend code, so it will be in, um, it will be in the function. So I'm gonna go right here to the update profile. So it's gonna be in a couple of functions. Let's start with the public profile. So for example, if I try to access the public profile, so slash users, slash public profile. Um, well, actually, yeah, the public profile is going to be accessible if for everybody. All right, so we're not gonna do it here. All right, so we have the update profile, so we're gonna go ahead and do it here. So I'm gonna go, I'm gonna check if we have an authentication or not, or if we have a session or not, and we're gonna check this using um, our OS uh, class. So we're gonna go if the ID is, is there for the user, if it's not there, sorry, since we did this exclamation mark, we're gonna return redirect and we're gonna go um we're gonna return redirect to we're gonna go base underscore url all right so let's go ahead and save this let's now try to access this route for simply updating uh the profile so let's go ahead and copy this and I want to go ahead right here. And I want to simply go ahead and paste this in. All right, so as you can see, attempt to read property ID on null. Update profile. Return. Attempt to read property ID on null. If um, auth user ID. Let's add a set right here and save. Let's refresh. All right, so as you can see right there, now the logic is working. We're getting back once again. If we go users slash update dash profile. All right, so as you can see right there, we're going back, which means that our logic is working. So we just needed this as set right here to check if the session has set or not so we're saying right here if the session is not set get him back to the base url which is simply the home page all right so let's copy this we also have this 
right here in this part so say we also have this in the update cv all right so save let's now try to access the update cv page so if we go user slash update update dash cv for example all right so we're going back to the home page and um this is the logic i guess for the update cv we can put it right here you know it doesn't matter that much actually since we already we did not allow him to simply go to the view so we will not be able to submit it submit the cv all right so here the users save jobs we also need it here and we also need it here at this part so we can simply save all of this and we can go now users slash um update dash profile and we can actually go applied applied jobs for example so let's access the applied job page so as you can see we're going back we go uh user slash slash save jobs let's access the saved jobs all right so since we're not logged in we're gonna go back once again to the home page which means that this whole um this whole logic now is working perfectly all right so let's now try to go ahead and log in and let's see if we're going to be able to access uh those links or those pages or not all right so let me pick up my email and my username all right so if we access this now all right so we can still access this right here so as you can see right over here you can simply click save jobs all right so we got them right here um so i guess that this will be all in the next video to so go ahead and also validate the part of the saved jobs which is right over here uh sorry uh of the single job page because we also have some kind of validations here and there um so we're gonna validate those all right so this will be all and i'll see you in the next video all right now so let's go ahead and try and validate um this page which is the single page right here so i want to go ahead and i want to log out now let's see when we're logged out what's going to go down so I'm just going to go to the home page once again, and I'm going to go to the single page. So as you can see, we actually have an error because we're trying to get data uh, that's basically related to the user session, and we already destroyed the session since we're logged out. So let's check out this part right here. So I'm going to just pick up this variable name. It's telling me that, uh, that you're trying to read the ID based on... Um, based on a null value something like this which means that it's not getting the data matching with an id uh, so let me try and access my my controllers jobs and jobs control i'm just gonna go ahead i'm gonna go control f and there we go this is the part that's displaying the error which is simply this part because we cannot get the user we cannot get the id from the os right here since we're logged out so I'm just gonna go uh for an s and s set right here so i'm gonna go if we have a user if we have an id right here or if we have an id try to go ahead and grab this data all right so cut this and paste like that and save all right so we go ahead and save this let's go ahead now and refresh all right so undefined variable check for saved jobs undefined variable say check for saved jobs so we have to cut this because it's not finding this right now since it's already in an if block not finding it's not finding it right here in the return view so we have to cut this and we have to paste right here um and we need to go else and now we need to return this all right i'm gonna re you know remove this comment so we're gonna return this without without these right here all right if we're not logged in all right so this is the solution so again since those right here 
uh, want some kind of idea from those from the OS class we need to go ahead and we need to bring this return right here also so once we grab this data we can actually go and return this data and we know return the view with the data all right and i'm gonna go right here else we're gonna go ahead and you know which means else uh, this else block will be triggered if we're not logged in so we're gonna go ahead and we're gonna return the data but without these right here these items that simply require authentication right because we do not have an authentication so let's save let's now go ahead and refresh all right so as you can see right there if you look at the error right now you can see that we move to another part which is the view as you can see form right here so we are in the view and also it's a, a session related view so if you look at right here we will it's telling me that checked for a safe job so basically it's telling me in the view um and this view right here so let me go and pick up this and i'm gonna go control f and paste so it's telling me that it's not finding this so again since we are in that job controller or in this function we did not send those right here in the view because we do not have the session now it's telling me that you're trying to trigger something or grab something and you're not sending it in the view right here because this is the view now that's being triggered because we're locked out all right i hope that makes sense so i'm gonna also check for the session right here and this will actually solve the problem all right so we're gonna check the session so we're gonna go asset auth. We're gonna go user. All right, and we're gonna go ID. All right, so if we're if the session is set. All right, so if the session is set right there, we're gonna trigger every. We're gonna trigger this, and uh, we're gonna trigger the form and all of that. And if not, we're simply gonna if we're gonna end f this right here all right so this should actually solve the problem i guess that we will have another one because the check for uh, applied jobs is also not in this uh in this view all right so this is why it's going to trigger an error also so if we actually uh we actually refresh this so again it's telling me that it's not finding this right now so we need to do something about this um so i'm gonna go ahead i'm gonna copy that and i'm also gonna check for this right here all right so so basically if we have a session go ahead and trigger all of that and if not we're gonna go ahead right here php and f oh, let's save this right here all right so refresh all right so there we go right there all right so as you can see right here we can simply view the page but if you look at this part you cannot find the save job or all right so sorry for the pause um so as you can see right here we cannot see the save job or apply for a job because we're simply blocked them from showing up since we already checked for the session so i might go at maybe at this part instead of this end f i can go else for example and add a column a column right here and i can go something like a paragraph for example with a class um alert alert dash success and i can go um a log n to apply for this job or save it all right i can simply close this paragraph i can simply close this f statement all right so this will look a lot nicer you know oh now save this let's now refresh all right so as you can see log in to apply for this job or save it so yeah sounds great um all right so I guess that this is all that we have time i guess that we have time to simply create those pages the about and the contact uh, pages right here um so if i go back to the routes um and if i go actually let me see 
All right, so copy this and paste multiple times so we can go contact. And I'm going to go right here, contact like that. And those are just very simple. Those are just very simple pages. All right, there is nothing uh, dynamic about them. All right, so right here also I'm going to go about. And this will be about. And if I copy this, and I'm going to also name this route as about right here. Um, all right, so let's go ahead and grab these functions. And I guess they will be in the home because this is, uh, I set them to be in the controller, in the home of, you know, the controller of home right here. Let's paste this. Let's copy this function. Go right here and paste this in. I want to remove this part of the string and I, I don't like this, you know, this way of writing functions. I'm just going to keep it like that. And let's go ahead and paste this. And assembly is just going to return a view of contact. That will be everything. All right, let's copy this once again. Let's go ahead and paste. Probably not going to send anything with the compact. And this will be about. And let's copy this and paste. And save like that. So let's now go ahead and copy. Or sorry. Um, yeah, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to make those so they will be in some kind of uh page uh, or sorry some kind of folder so this folder i will name it pages like that all right so let's go to the views side the views i'm gonna go ahead uh you know folder i'm gonna name this folder pages and inside the pages i'm gonna just go uh contact.php like that and i'm gonna go ahead right here contact All right, so there it is, a section, and there it is, a section, another section, and these are just the three sections that we need to grab. So paste. Uh, I'm gonna go to this page, for example. I'm gonna pick up the code for navbar and for this section. All right, so let me go ahead and paste, and let me also go down at the bottom right here. paste this like that also all right so i want to link to this uh in the app.php which is where our links are um and i want to go right here i want to go url underscore two and this will be about And right here, I'm gonna copy this, and this will be contact. All right, so I'm gonna also create a page for the about, obviously. I'm gonna go about.php. All right, so copy this, and paste, and this will be about right here. All right, so grab this. Copy and go right here in the about and let's remove this whole body thing and let's paste this in. All right, so now I think that we like we linked to the about right here. So all what we can go all what we can do is just refresh this. And if we go to about right now, we we'll actually see this about page. Maybe there is something wrong with the image, background image. I want to close those. I want to go right at the top. And there it is, the part for the image. We can go base underscore URL. We can go public slash assets slash images and we're just gonna cut this actually and we need to go right here and paste all right so save let's refresh 
All right, so this is how you display the image, and you already know this. So you got a bunch of images right here to simply display. All right, so this is your mission. I think that I like did this like a thousand times. Maybe I will even do it once again in the contact because it will also have a background image, which is right here. So again, you will just open up your PHP tags and you'll go base underscore URL. All right, you're going to go to public slash assets. You're simply going to fetch this. Cut and paste. All right, so right here, I'm just going to go refresh. All right, so click contact. So there we go, right there. We got, you got also uh, two images right here to display. Um, all right, so this will be everything let's try and log in and check out um this is not the right pdf sorry this is not the right text um all right so we're gonna go this is the password let's pick up this also all right so if you access now a job all right so as you can see right there um there it is we can simply save this or apply for this job but we already applied and saved this job um the important thing is we can access the buttons or the validations all right so i guess yeah that this will be all and i will see you in the next video all right now so let's go ahead and try and search for the posts you know create the search function on our own web app I guess that after the creating the search function and working with the trending keywords right here, the users and will be done. All right, so let's simply try and work our way through this. Well, first of all, if you look right here, if you look at our template, you're going to see in the home page that we have an input for the title. And we also have two select box, one for selecting the region or actually the location. And R is for selecting the job type. Um, so we want to go ahead and we want to see what's going on with this, with these two select boxes. They're not basically here. We actually go to your home page. Uh, you're going to find this form right here. And this form is the form that we're seeing right over here, which will allow us to search. So if you look at the select boxes, uh, right over here you're gonna find you know that they have some kind of class select picker and uh, this is probably the class that's assembly uh, not being grabbed by maybe a, a javascript file that's not been included or something uh, some you know something like that some error in some javascript file um, so we want to go ahead and you want to remove these and just add this class right here all right, you know, we're going to remove the select picker class for both of these select boxes and we're going to paste uh, the class of this symbol input and we're simply going to find our, um, you know, they, they will simply show up like that. So we're going to use bootstrap instead, instead of this file that's been included in this template. Um, all right, so let's now go ahead and try to process this since we finished um, a part uh, of the design. I, you know, you, we will actually go back to the form actually once again, but let's go ahead and take care of the routes first. So I want to go to the routes and I want to pick up this link, for example. I'm going to go right here, slash. Um, I'm going to go and write the symbol comment of searching for jobs. And I want to paste this in. So this will be a type of post, a link type of post. Um, and it will be, we'll go to the jobs and it will hit uh, search dash jobs. We will not take any kind of, um, any kind of parameters and we will hit the jobs controller right here. We will hit the function of searching or searching for jobs, something like that, or searching, searching, all right, jobs or for jobs you know whatever that you want to call it we will simply remove the part for the parameter and we will give this a name of search dot jobs like that let's copy this function and go to the app let's go to the controllers uh, jobs and 
let's go back to our controller and we're gonna go right here all right and we're gonna go down the bottom and we're gonna save this so i want to go ahead and i want to pick up like you know any any kind of um any kind of function will actually do so we're gonna simply uh cut this and we're gonna paste right now so let's go ahead and remove this id so what we're gonna do right here we're gonna pick up the three pieces of data that the user is simply going to send uh right over here all right and we're gonna use the like keyword or the like function and match these datas with you know the datas that we have right here inside our own jobs table and this is how we're gonna get our own um this is how you know this is how we're gonna get our jobs all right so let's go ahead and do this so i want to go ahead and i want to uh, like in instanti instantiate the jobs the job model so i'm gonna go jobs and i'm gonna go job like that all right and right here i'm simply not gonna need this data because i'm not gonna insert anything so let's remove this part and i want to go ahead right here i want to grab these so i want to go uh for the title of this job and i will go this request and i'm gonna go get post right here we're simply gonna get the title like that all right from the input with the name title and also i need to grab um, the location and i need to grab the job type all right so here we go this will actually be a location this will be a job type all right so now let's go ahead and try to match this so i'm gonna go jobs and i'm simply gonna go ahead uh right here and i'm gonna go like actually i want to insert i want to save this and or sort this in um in the searches job or or just searches variable right here so these are the result of the search so i'm gonna go jobs i'm gonna pick up um the object that i instantiated from this class and i'm simply going to use the like keyword and i'm going to match the title that's coming from the database you know the title of this job which is simply the column was the title that the user is simply entering right here all right i'm gonna also do the same thing for uh, the rest of these pieces of data so i'm gonna go for the location i'm gonna also send in the location right here all right i'm also gonna go down right here i'm gonna go like and i also need to go for the job underscore type and this will be matched with the data that's coming from the job type all right and i also want to grab i want to go with the find all so i need to grab all the data that's matching with these and all i'm going to do right now is just go ahead and check if we actually have searches let's go ahead and let's go to a view uh, so i'm going to delete all of this so we're going to go return view like that and we're going to go to the view in the jobs folder and this view it will be searches all right we're going to go with the compact and we're going to go right here and send this in oh now let's save and let's copy this let's go ahead right here to app let's go to views let's go to the jobs and let's simply create this dot php all right so we're gonna go to the jobs category right here we're gonna copy this and we're gonna go right here and paste this in all right so uh so this is the home the name we're not gonna need the name for now maybe we will just go searches all right so let's go ahead and paste this in also all right so i'm gonna go ahead right here all right so we have blah 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 so we want to go ahead just for now and keep this as searches all right and we want to go ahead and want to pick up the searches variable and you want to send it right here so we're gonna simply loop through this and we're gonna give it an alias so since we're gonna give it an alias this will now be like some kind of object and from this object we can instantiate any type 
uh, any kind of data based on the column name right here um so yeah this is basically it so let's go ahead and save this let's now go ahead and refresh this all right so this is not actually everything we need to go back to the form so we want to go to the home and you want to pick up the form so the method it's post uh so we're going to go for the action right here uh the action will basically be url underscore tool and when i go ahead to routes i'm gonna pick this up and when i go right here and paste all right so it will go to this and if we go right here to the input so the name right here i'm gonna go with the title I'm gonna copy this I'm gonna go right here and this will be the location I'm gonna go right here and this will be the job type. Alright, so save. Um, so I guess the button right here, the type submit, which is actually great. So yeah, this will be actually everything. So save the whole thing and let's go ahead and refresh. Alright, so let's try to search for something that's actually that, that we have. So for example, I'm gonna pick up the product designer right here and let's for the location we basically have new york city uh new york city but i guess that we only have like we only have new york right here not city so let me go right here actually yeah actually for the options right here um for the options we need to set a value right here because it's gonna grab the data uh from the value all right it's not gonna grab it from the html content so we're gonna go value. We're simply gonna we're gonna remove this uh, anywhere. We're gonna go New York City, and we're gonna go right here. And this will actually be Cairo, like that. And these are just the ones that we will have for now. So I'm gonna copy this and paste it right here. I'm gonna copy this and paste it right here, and this will also copy this and paste it right here and save. So now let's refresh once again. Let me just copy this first, as we're gonna lose it since we're gonna refresh. All right, so let's paste this in, and I'm gonna go ahead and make this so it will be New York City. Actually, um, I'm gonna keep the type of the job as, let me see, full time right here. All right, so we're basically trying to grab this um, this record. All right, so full time right here. We click search. All right, so attempt to read property ID on array. Uh, this is searches attempt to read property ID on array. So yeah, yeah, of course. So if we go, we actually go back to the home. Not to the home, we're, we're trying to grab this in the searches. As you can see, the error in the searches.php. So yeah, these should be, unfortunately, they are going to be variables. Uh, sorry, keys like that, array and key. All right, so. Actually, let's cut this. We're gonna go ahead and send right here. We're also gonna cut all of these and send them as a key of this array. All right, so cut this also. And paste, cut this also. And paste, cut, and paste, and save. Something else that we should take care of in the home should also do a value for the select box so this will be part time paste copy this paste let's copy this and paste save all right so let's refresh the whole thing let's go ahead and pick up this 
all right let's paste and this will be new york this will be a full-time job we click search jobs all right so we got the job right over here so we tried to search for this and we simply grabbed it um all right so the search is working perfectly right here now let's see if we try to search for something that does not exist for example so if we go to python um we go to python uh dev right here if we make this so it will be cairo it will be part-time we click search job so possibly there will be no jobs right here that's sent so mm -hmm. um dev searches blah 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 um return view job slash searches all right so i'm gonna go ahead right here i'm gonna go ahead i want this to go back even though we do not have uh we do not have data all right so let's go back and let's try click search jobs all right so we're gonna go back but there is not gonna be any kind of searches so in this case we want to go ahead and we want to validate this so we want to go something like f php right here f uh searches right here we're gonna use the count function if this is greater than zero that means that we got some kind of uh functions that we got some sorry some kind of data so if we got the data right there we will go ahead we will go php else and we will go um with the paragraph we will go with the class alert alert dash success so if we basically did not get any kind of um any kind of data you now we will just go ahead and send something like there are no searches was this keyword all right so basically end this like that hp and f save now let's go ahead and refresh all right so we cannot refresh this so let's go back and so if we click search jobs all right so we cannot use the count on an array I guess that may, makes sense because the count should only be used on some kind of function so we have to do something else um let's try and just remove this um let me see hold on your function count and array so let's let me just stop for a second i'll look for a solution all right so i looked up um a solution and the problem it was actually here in the count so this should be used only when we have an object but if we have an array we can simply use the count like that as a function right away so this will count the results in this array so if we have results that means that this will return a number that's greater than zero and if we have a number that's greater than zero we're going to go ahead and we're going to for each or data we're going to loop through it like that and if we do not uh, have any kind of element, uh, elements inside this array we'll just go ahead and we'll display uh, this simple paragraph all right so i want to go ahead right here now let's actually go back all right so we as you can see right there i got python dev Cairo, and then i will make this so it will be a full-time job if I go search right here, all right, so as you can see, there are no searches with this keyword. So the validation is working right now. I also want to send in um, let me see, I want to send in the title, for example, right along with the compact. I want to save, I want to go to the search, and I want to go instead of this keyword search, I can go. title like that all right so i can simply also grab this 
I can go right here, results. For this, or you know, for, and we're simply going to send in the title. All right, so let's save. Let's now go ahead and try again. Let's make this so it will actually be um, this right here. So now let's grab a results that the result that we already have. So this is the part a part time a part time job, and it will be New York City. All right, so I will keep it search like that, and here we go. Results for back and developer right here. Um, all right, so yeah i guess that this is all so this will be all and i will simply see you in the next videos